What is up everyone, Avial Easter here with Yappa238.com and welcome to the Yappa Sock Podcast. It's the podcast where we talk about being young, being apostolic, taking that power and putting it into action. And I'm super excited, Yappa fam, because today we have a clip from our January 2023 Yappa fam hangout. Now, this isn't just an ordinary clip. Today, we are going in depth on a lot of the, um, how would you say, the elements that make up one of the predominant demonic spirits of our age, and that is the Jezebel spirit. And uh, to give a little backstory, uh, it was the Thursday night before the Yap Fam United Hangout, which happens every month on a Friday, I think it's the third Friday of the month. And so the day before we were talking about it, I was giving a little bit of a prom promo of it on the Yap Alive. And in that moment, when I was promoing it, I was like, you know what? We're just gonna, we're gonna hang out, we're gonna talk. And uh, usually there's a direction that we decide to take, whether it's fellowship, games, whatever it may be, and sometimes just discussions. Um, but I felt in that moment that, hey, you know, let's just talk tomorrow. And it was like an impression from the Holy Ghost, I believe. And then earlier uh, that Friday, the day before, or the, the day of the event, um, I, I was, I felt the same thing. Where it's like, hey, let's just let's just talk tonight. Let's just talk, okay? And then uh, during a, uh, our pre-event planning session, um, one of uh, the, the staff members on Yappa's team was like, you know what? What if we just talk today? What? Let's just talk. And um, I was like, okay, it's cool. We're like, we're gonna talk. It's confirmation after confirmation, and uh, it, it completely was just sealed when we started the call. And there is a, a new a friend, excuse me, a sister of someone who is, uh, has been on our calls and, and stuff, uh, stuff like that. It was her first time on. And earlier that day, she was she was praying, she was talking to God, and she she mentioned to, to the Holy Ghost, like, hey, I, I want to be fed, you know, um, spiritual connectivity, etc. And uh, her sister was like, hey, do you want to join the Yap Fam? You know, to hang out that's happening uh, tonight. And uh, she felt in her spirit that that was the, the answer to her prayer. And uh, so I was like, okay, so there's something going on tonight. And lo and behold, little did we know, the Holy Ghost was going to move and begin to minister and begin to operate and begin to attach so many principles and understandings and knowledges and, and revelations about the Jezebel spirit, the things that we face honestly, in our lives, in the Apostolic Church, and in this world at large, he was going to tie those things and give us all a very divine revelation on, on this spirit, how to overcome it, and what to do about it when we face it in our lives, in our church, in our churches, our youth groups, wherever we may, we may face it, uh, what to do about it. And uh, this is going to be the audio, which you're about to listen to, is going to be the audio from that Zoom call where again we unpacked it and um and i'm just so thankful to the holy ghost for the opportunity to have these revelations exposed to me and um, ultimately applied uh, to my life in a, in a very very unique way and i think that everyone can take something away from what's being said uh, from this call so i do want to encourage everyone uh, the yabba fam events that we have the zoom calls uh they're, they're not just young people hanging out we are very purposeful and we allow the Holy Ghost to move. We allow the Holy Ghost to minister. The gifts of the Spirit operate quite frequently in our prayer meetings, in our, um, in our hangouts, like very, very frequently. God speaks a lot. And um, this isn't like big eyes, little U's or like, hey, look at us. No, it's not that. It's, it's that we do our best to make room and we want you to to uh, be involved with those calls. So if you have not been, join uh, the call. If you haven't been on any of them, if you haven't, if you're kind of distant from it, whatever, I'm, I'm telling you, you want to join because this is an opportunity where we allow the Holy Ghost to move and things like this happen. What you're about to listen to, things like this happen. And so um, I just wanted to give uh, a little bit of the backstory for today's podcast. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump over to that call. Make sure you take notes, get a pen and piece of paper out. Listen to this many, many, many times over because it'll, it'll, um, it's something that will apply to your life and will ultimately liberate you to operate in the gifts of the Spirit like the Holy Ghost wants you to operate. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, alrighty, let's go ahead and jump straight into the Zoom call for January 2023's um, Yappa Fam United Hangout.
But anyway, so uh, let's open with a word of prayer, officially open with a word of prayer, and then we'll um, we'll jump into it. Cool. All right. Uh, thank you, Holy Ghost, for who you are. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that you've shown us, that you have allowed for us to be a part of your kingdom in a very great and real capacity, God. Uh, we, we humbly receive that understanding and thank you for it today because of uh, all the billions of people on this planet, the hundreds of millions of people that surround us in our, in our countries, God, the, the uh, tens of uh, thousands of people that we're surrounded by in our cities and God, the hundreds of people that are in our neighborhoods and the surrounding areas, God, uh, you, you found us and you called us, God, and you chose us. And uh, we may never know why, uh, why you specifically chose us, God. But we thank you that you did and that you saved us, God. And through all of our faults, our failures, our warts, our shortcomings, our sins, our mess ups, iniquities, our trespasses and our sins, God, you uh, decide to continue to work with us. And we thank you for that. Jesus, tonight we submit ourselves to you wholly and we ask that you would forgive us for everything God, of this day, maybe of this week, of this month, God, and of this year that has uh, come between us and you, God, if there's any thought processes and patterns of, of, of habits, God, that has uh, kept us from you, if there's willful sins, God, sins that we committed unknowingly as well, God, if there's anything that is between us and you, we ask that, that those things would be removed. And uh, you, we pray that you would wash us in your blood and wash us in your spirit, God, and help us to take tonight a very definitive step in the direction of becoming more supernaturally inclined, more sensitive to your spirit, more child of God-like. Jesus, we ask in your holy, powerful name, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends, so I'll, I'll go ahead and, and uh, start kind of open this up um, because I think that, um, well, as it was back in September, uh, I know um, you guys have heard this a lot many times, but um, Holy Ghost gave me a vision. In the vision, there is a young man, a, a young person that had a sword and they were swinging it and um, they were swinging against fears. And uh, as I would swing the word of truth, uh, the, the sword of the spirit, um, really, I felt that was the word of God and truth that um, u- utilizing that element of God was going to dispel the darkness, the darkness of fear. And in time, uh, there would be that young person would develop spiritual giftings and spiritual sensitivity and, and demonstration of the spirit. And they would link up with someone who they would marry. And that person, one would put a thousand, two would put ten thousand they too will go out and um, and do ministry together in a very, very, very apostolic, powerful way. And um, during the prayer meeting, that could have been August's prayer meeting, but during the prayer meeting when I actually saw the vision for the first time, not the time I've seen it, the second time, or the time that came before that when I was helping a young lady um, through a very, very difficult circumstance in her life, um, that uh, during that that time, uh, or sorry, it wasn't that time, but uh, I started to experience it. It started, to, it started to unfold in my life. Certain fears that I had, the Holy Ghost started targeting with his word and with the spirit. And there was a purging purification process that had begun um, closer to the end of the, of uh, like the last week of December. Like God initiated this purging process. And if you guys know anything about purging processes, this is not the funnest because you're going through fire. And you're finding out a lot of the impurities that are in your soul, heart, spirit you know what what happens is um you you have a a field that's a hundred acres large right and the soil in the field you have maybe 25 acres covered because of your age the amount of knowledge and wisdom that you have everything that you poured into yourself well uh you're limited because of those factors you know you don't know everything you don't have ultimate experience and so you never get to the place where you completely um you're completely void of human mess ups and faults and, and things of that nature. Um, so we work on it and God works on, uh, on us and works those things out. And so I entered this season 
And in entering that season, um, there's things that, you know, from spiritual authority, from, um, you know, things that just after dwelling on words, I would uh, get understanding and revelation about. And I understood what was going on. And the Holy Ghost was stri strictly targeting that fear. And uh, God doesn't like fear. That's, you know, just reality. Um, never do you see God in the Old Testament or Jesus in the New Testament having uh, a very a passive attitude towards fear because um, some would say it's faith in reverse, but not only is it kind of faith in reverse, it's um, fear is, is void of faith. When you have fear, you can't have faith. And um, that's the currency of the spirit. So supernatural Oh man. Okay, here we go. All right. So supernatural um, demonstration. You operating uh, in the demonstration of this of the spirit of God. You can't have um, fear there. And perfect love casts out all fear. All right. And um, if you feel bound and, and arrested by fear, um, the truth will make you free. And the worst thing to fear is the truth. You fear the truth. You fear the the um, the agent of of liberation, right? The thing that can actually make you free. And so, uh, going through this this processing, um, I've I've come to find out a lot of things, and um, it's uh, it's 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 all t going towards and moving towards a deeper and more dynamic um, fear is faith in the enemy. Yeah, yeah, that's good, Robert. Um, I was literally discussing this with my mom this morning. Well, that's good. Let's see where we go. All right. So, um, yeah, so, so, uh, it's going for the, the supernatural demonstration. Um, what we're coming, we're getting close to the coming of the Lord. Um, and we, it's on our shoulders to be the generation that actually does what has been prophesied that we do. Um, Brother Caleb Herring. How many of you guys know a brother evangelist, Caleb Herring? Okay, Caleb Herring. All right. So he's um uh I don't think he's related to Josh Herring. <laughs> okay, I just shared the last name. But he he where um there's a, a number of evangelists, uh, young evangelists, Josh Herring, um, Victor Jackson. Well, they took churches now, but um Chris Green, a few few people, they all have their own distinct anointings and, and demonstrations, Cody Marks. Um but uh, brother Caleb Herring has that deep, deep, like he walks with like that deep spirit of prayer. Like it satur like it comes out of him. Like it, it like is if, if he walked with a fire hose strapped to his back uh, that was connected to the supernatural, what would be flowing through him is that spirit of prayer. And so anyway, um, he was preaching, uh, and uh, he was he was talking about what happened with Jehu. All right, Jehu was what killed the um, the the man who killed Jezebel. Okay, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah didn't do it. Elisha didn't do it. Um, no one else did it. It's Jehu, and all of you guys know that in this present time, we're dealing with a, a very strong spirit of De Jezebel. Uh, yesterday, I recorded a video. Um, that is to be released sometime because we're, I'm, I'm starting to put content back on YouTube in video format. And uh, it's interesting how God gives people, I'll segue this uh, real quick, but there's a, um, a, a van, uh, evangelist pastor, uh, Reverend Keith Clark. The, does that name ring a bell to anyone? Keith Clark. He's an older gentleman. He already, he passed on. Um, he came up under, um, or he was very close with uh, brother T.W. Barnes. And I remember being in a service of his and he, he lived in like seeing demons and, you know, uh, angels, like he lived there, like he, he'd be staring off in the distance and, and, um, in the service he was preaching and then he turns to what we see as nothing. And he starts addressing a, a devil that showed up, uh, in the congregation and it wasn't in someone, it, was, it just showed up anyway. So it's interesting how God will give people in, in that capacity in different capacities. So. Anyway, um, Jehu kills Jezebel, and we're dealing with the spirit of Jezebel. Je and uh, as I was recording this video, uh, I opened up every passage in the scripture that mentions Jezebel's name. And it's interesting to note that Jezebel means um, 
Bail is pretty much Bail is, uh, or Bail is my husband, something along those lines. Bail is, Bail is my husband, which means that she's the wife of Bail. Um, well, this demonic spirit of Jezebel is um, obviously we know and understand it's extremely manipulative. It's very deceitful. It's it's this and it's that. But Jezebel works very tightly, very closely with fear. Think about it. Okay. So what caused Elijah to run and flee into? Lord God, have mercy, Lord. You help me, Lord. Um, what caused uh, Elijah to run into the wilderness? Um, it was his fear of Jezebel. All right, it was fear. Okay, let's say that it was fear. So he caught God's fire from heaven. Okay. I looked up at the sky and know what we know about astronomy and everything. That pillar of fire was very, very long. I don't know exactly where it originated, but it had to have been like miles long to be coming from the heavens. I mean, who knows? It could have been trillions of light years long. I don't know. But it came down and Elijah sees it. And after that, Elijah, and seeing a miraculous demonstration that no one's ever seen on seen like actively like come down like that um since you know uh moses and the pillar of uh of uh, fire by night you know it's it, he sees that and in that state of spiritual strength he takes out a sword and starts chopping the heads off of um or killing the prophets of baal so he's going for everybody just blah 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 it's dead body after dead body and you know prophets wield swords Okay, prophets wield swords, and oh God, have mercy, Lord Jesus. Yeah, I'm. So, this is not that fabricated stuff. I'm. What's happening? I'm trying to. Um. Uh, I feel a Holy Ghost and feel like talking in tongues, but it's not tongues. It's um. It's words. So we're we're gonna go somewhere tonight. All right. So, the thing is, and, and we're gonna make some parallels to where we live right now, and where the Holy Ghost is trying to take us all. Okay. So, uh, as a movement, but specifically us right now. Okay, um, so this spirit of, of uh, or Elijah, Elijah is emboldened to kill, and prophets will soar. So you have to remember Samuel um, went and he killed Agag. He killed Agag. Saul, Saul kept Agag alive, which is the king of the Amalekites, or Am Ammonites, I believe. Someone, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm looking at the homies. Ladies, somebody. Okay, so someone is. Can I get the Amalekites confused with the Amalekites? Probably because I'm reading the Old Testament, and um, I'm curious to know what the iniquity of the Amalekites was because it's not really mentioned. Anyway, so um, I think it's Ammonites. But anyway, Saul goes and he, he saves the cattle. He saves this and that, and he saves Agag. Well, Saul is, or excuse me, Samuel is. He's ticked. Like, dude, you did not obey, and so the prophet wields a sword and he kills. And I think, and I'm going to say this so I don't forget it. I think what's going to happen is God's going to raise up prophets and prophetesses. Okay. These people coming at me in these reels. Oh my gosh. But anyway, um, he's going to raise up a prophetic voice and the prophetic voice is going to get purer and purer as the, as the coming of the Lord draws nigh. Well, the purer the voice comes and I believe that he's dealing with some of us. He's going to use us in a prophetic uh, manner because that's the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy and that's the fulfillment of, of the promise of the father that was bestowed upon us in the book of Acts. All right, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Well, the prophet wields swords, okay? Prophets kill. And prophets kill unrighteousness and unholiness. And let me ask you guys this. How many of us know, and you can say, yeah, that's going to happen, that in church and Christendom in general, and possibly maybe in our ranks and possibly maybe in our churches and possibly maybe with ourselves, there's um, areas where we, we're not, we're not, kill militant on certain things that may be weights and or possibly sins where we're not like it, it has to die it has to die okay i don't want to look at the zoo <laughs> the pain. yeah that's me all right because there's some there may be areas in your life where you know you haven't killed it yet okay and um and god's gonna help you do that but uh in christian let's talk about the christian home in general then there's um, uh, Revelation 2.20, um, the church of Thyatira, okay? And this is where Jezebel's name crops up again. Church of Thyatira, you're doing great. You guys are awesome. 
You got to keep in the word, etc. But I have something against you. You suffer that woman Jezebel, and she and who calls herself a prophetess. Manipulation. I'm on your side. But what does she do? She, that spirit, um, draws the church and was drawing the church at Thyatira into, um, into fornication. Well, we understand fornication to mean, yes, sexual immorality, but understanding sexuality, it's a very, very solical, spiritual thing, and probably 10% of it is physical, okay? So we, we understand that in the in biblical and spiritual context, let's say, immorality or fornication, that's not immorality, but fornication um, is you, is you two-timing on Jesus, you fornicating with the world, you, you know, fraternizing with the enemy. Okay, and so if 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 uh, that is the case, then we can read uh, Revelation two twenty as this this spirit of Jezebel who feigns herself to be a prophetess. Hey, I know the word of God, but it's causing people to engage and indulge in their own fleshly lusts. Does that sound like the charismatic church at large? Does that sound like you know the Osteens and the oh guys and the Myers and the whoever the big people and the uh, Alan Pars and the uh, I don't know all the uh, social media influencers and whoever that. Hey, you can have God, you can have the gifts of the Spirit, but you and you know you can speak in tongues, you can do all that stuff, and you can have what you desire. So it's okay, Brandon Lake. You can have you know sleeves tat, be tatted up. Why? Because you want that, and God doesn't. Following after what their own what lusts, okay, it's immorality. Um, and because we, the church at Thyatira, let's say, suffered her, we suffered it, we allowed it to be and was patient with her. Oh, they're going through their seasons of growth. So um, church at Thyatira, uh, Revelation 2.20, not only does he mention fornication, but he mentions to, uh, now this is Jesus talking to, to Paul, or excuse me, Saul, or excuse me, John on the island of Patmos. And he's like, and also... Um, to meet, eat meats offered to idols, okay? Uh, Psalms 101, verse 3. I will set no wicked thing before my eye. I hate, okay, so I'm not going to look at it, but I hate the work of them that turn aside, the work, the production, what's produced by those who go by the way, the work, the, the, the works that they do, the them that turn aside, and it will not cleave unto me, Okay. Um, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man love the world, the love of the Father is where? Not in him. And so if we eat meat, meats offered to idols, we eat things to our own, things that we desire, but it's demonic. It's, 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 it's an, you know, the tattoos, the drinking, the sex, the whatever it is, all that, that, um, well, not sex, but like sex in a, in a, it's fornication, adultery, you know, not sex in its pure form, but that all that is is pushing into our own carnal uh, natural desires or well, not natural, but our own desires. And so um, this spirit of Jezebel gives us just enough spirituality to where we feel a good buzz um, from the Holy Ghost and and but yet is in in balance and in tandem with the lusts of our flesh and the desires of our flesh. And that's where the manipulation and stuff comes in heavy spiritually. Okay, so now let's take Jezebel and let's go back into this in the into the first Kings uh, 16 context, or maybe it's second Kings 16. Um yeah, I think it's second Kings. Second Kings 16, let's go back to that. Okay, so Jezebel is not completely against God. Or that's what she would have you think. Why? Because there's a man named Nabal, Naboth, excuse me, and there's a vineyard. That was right next to the palace. And Ahab comes in with his non-masculine self. This is another thing, too, is um, men, we're going to have to, and anyway, not a lot, we're going to have some purging in the church. Um, because there there are young ladies, not any of you guys, hopefully, but that have been persuaded by this um, uh, feminist you know, uh, agenda movement. And, I, and like I said yesterday, I had to be on both sides. You know, kind of, hey, you know, you, you can't, you're not going to, you can't use up authority. But then the scripture isn't talking about that and it's going back and forth. Anyway, so um, 
uh, because it's dealing with that spirit. But here's the thing is that that um, feminist uh, women first is a, is a very, it is a manipulative spirit, but it's also a perverted spirit because women do not come before man. And um, this isn't, you know, male chauvinism and stuff. It's, it's the way, I mean, you're going to get mad at first Corinthians one through three, 11, one through three, you know, you're going to get mad at first. You can't do that. You know, it's just, that's just what it is. And, um, and, and uh, a woman needs to submit to a man um, who is completely submitted to God. And that's where I think a lot of women who uh, struggle being older and getting into a relationship, um, they kind of get on skates a little bit. They're kind of like wobbly because they want to get in a relationship and they let that lust and that not lust like a sexual lust, but that lust, meaning a desire they let that desire pull them into a relationship with a man who's not submitted to God um, because uh, they're not submitted to God's timing. Okay. But that's a conversation for another day. Anyway, what's going to ha have to happen is we're going to have to have um, non Ahab like men. We're going to need Jehu type men to drive out that spirit that could possibly be in the church. Could it be in the church? Could it be in the Absog movement? I think it is. I mean, if it was in the church of Thyatira, in the Bible, I don't think uh, too many of us have churches who are um, of a higher caliber than uh, what we find in the book of Revelation. Maybe, maybe you know, there's multiple other churches that had different problems. So, um, but uh, it could be, and I think it is. So the church of Thy Thyatira um, was dealing with it. So there's probably pockets and areas of the Absog movement that deal with it where they're suffering that spirit of Jezebel. Okay. So uh, what is the, what does the spirit of Jezebel do? The spirit of Jezebel um, goes directly. And I know I'm talking about laying a foundation and we're going to talk about gifts of the spirit. Um, the spirit of Jezebel goes for the, the prophet. Okay. And uh, also the innocent. So uh, her manipulative tactics with Nab Naboth, Ahab comes in crying and pouting. I can't get the vineyard. Cause Naboth said, no, that's not how things work. Well, what does Jezebel do? Jezebel concocts a plan. She gets sons of Belial, you know, the bad guys, um, to during a time of fasting unto Jehovah God. So see, she's not completely against God. That's what she wants you to believe. All right. She's okay to be submitted to Ahab, which is king of Israel. And they have their, you know, remnants of Jehovah God. But her alt, but she, Jezebel, is not submitted to Ahab. She's submitted to Baal because Baal is her husband. If you look at it, the definition of her name. Okay. So she concocts this plan. And while they're in consecration to Jehovah God, they lie on Naboth and say that he, he blasphemed. And so the community stones him. So there's a little bit of godliness, right? Right. Okay. Hey, you, you blaspheme Jehovah God will kill you. That's what they did. So it's not that Ahab and his reign was completely devoid of Jehovah God. No, there is what? Form fornication there's a mixing of the two there's a mixing of, of of right and wrong and that's the lukewarmness that's why god I'll spew you out of my mouth be hot or cold okay and so the worst that israel got israel didn't get bad be, like and they where they cut out all of jehovah no they try to marry carnality carnal things of this world with and worship to baal in their you know work with god Okay, so <clears throat> anyway, so uh, Jezebel pulls those strings against Naboth killed. Okay, now what does that mean? Um, or that's a demonstration of Jezebel's capacity to like manipulate and leverage righteous indignation against other people. I mean, she, that's a master manipulator. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's some people who that were casting stones at Naboth that, um, had a more of a conviction towards the things of God than others. Right. So it's like, it's a sticky thing, man. <clears throat> Actually it's not because why the voice, the word, the devil played on Israel's home turf by looking religiously accurate. Yeah. I think, um, yeah. Well, Israel's carnality, Israel's desire to be like, you know, the world really. And um, was a mixed in the sins of Jeroboam were were mixed into their belief on God, which made it made it a stronger deception. All right. And deception, the greatest deception has the most truth in it. Well, pure truth comes to Elijah and exposes the deal. And he's like, okay. So God says, you know, hey, uh, anoint Jehu. Jehu's gonna kill um 
kill uh, Jezebel. Okay. And uh, God told Elijah, and this is what brother Caleb Herring had pointed out. So Elijah was told to anoint Jehu. Okay. Time passes. Elisha comes on the scene. Elijah gets raptured into heaven. Elisha has his mantle. Elisha has his spirit double portion. And Elisha goes out. And now that responsibility of anointing Jehu is on Elisha. Okay. Time passes. And you find this in, in uh, 2 Kings um, 16, I believe it is. Time passes. And now, or 18, sorry. And now Elisha needs to fulfill, needs to do, needs to complete the promise needs to act and experience the revival, let's say, okay, operate in the gifts, or let's say, do the thing that was, okay, he needs to do that thing. But Elisha is getting older. And so he calls, the Bible says, now watch now, he spoke to one of the children of the prophets, the children, the child. And nowhere in the Bible does, does um, the Bible say this man ran or anything. First, go to uh, Second Kings, okay, check it out. So the, the child of the prophet, the, the kid who didn't have the most wisdom, who didn't have the most life experience, who didn't live and do, et cetera, et cetera. Like, dude, we're young cats, dude. We don't have all the experience in the world. But what did Elisha tell him to do? Go speedily. Run fast. Get over to Jehu and do what? Do what Elijah was told to do and anoint him. Fulfill the word of God that was given to Elijah. Wait, but who's doing it? It's not Elijah. It's not Elisha. It's so, and this is what Brother Caleb Herring was saying. It's not Billy Cole. It's not Lee Stone King. It's not Vesta Mangan. It's not, you know, and you guys can insert, you know, it's not the Johnny James. It's not Bobby Wendell. It's not T.W. Barnes. It's, it's not them. Well, then who would it be? Well, it should be the Anthony Mangans. And the, no, that was the Elijah generation, the, the secondary generation. This is no disrespect to anyone. He, he didn't mean any disrespect by calling names either because he called names. Then it's, it's that, the, the next generation, the Elishas. Yeah, but there's a word that is to be fulfilled that Elijah didn't do and Elisha didn't do. Now, did they did they disobey? Did they miss? Did they did they spend too much time doing X Y Z? No, they were involved in the in the purpose of God. And what God understands about His word is that His word won't return to Him void. And if there's a willing vessel, that word will get accomplished. And so the extension of Elish of of, of Elijah was Elisha and was that young child of the prophet. That's an extension of him of his ministry of who he is. So it's not that, you know, they there's anything to to no any shade to throw on the older generations. It's not that. It's just that this is how this thing worked out to be. So the young lad, he runs, he's going. The child, as the Bible says, he's going and he's running. And he gets to Jehu. Takes that thing, blah, la la la. All right, you're anointed, dude. And Jehu gets up in the power of the anointing and the word of God, and he goes to take care of the entire house of Ahab. Ahab's dead at this point. He got killed in battle as the word of the Lord uh, was spoken to him. And uh, so now he goes to Joram. Joram's the son of Ahab and Jezebel. And he goes and they're like, dude, now check this out. This is super important, okay? Because this is where it starts getting in this, into the spiritual application. And we're going to apply it into our lives right now, okay? Okay. Jehu is, is, is a, the captain, one of the captains in Israel's, military force so he's moving okay he's a strong man jehu means jehovah is he okay so it could be taken this way he's operating in jehovah's stead which i think that is a very great way to take it because he 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 kills jehu kills he calls all the prophets hey we're going to worship baal everyone's in there and he turns to all, all them people who are on his side and says if a life for a life if you let any of these prophets go you're going to die in their stead. So they slay all the prophets in one go. I mean, Jehu is killing everything, bringing the entire house of Ahab down. And I think, 
that could very well be the purpose and the desire of the Holy Ghost. And so to think Jehu in the moment of his anointing was operating in, in, in Jehovah's stead as an extension of what God wanted to do here on this planet is a very good uh, idea to, 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 to play with when you're talking about the definition of his name and what he actually did. So Jehu goes and, and he's a violent man. He's a, he's a warring man. He comes to, he's coming to kill. And so Joram sends a guy out. One of the watchmen peeks out. Hey, the driving looks like that of Jehu. Okay, well, go. Is he coming in peace? Because he's he's coming. He's coming hard. One guy goes, "Hey, are you in peace?" Hey, he's, hey, get behind, join us. All right, or he, he, it's going to be a bad day for you. So that guy he leaves, never comes back. Say, like, okay, wait. Now it's making Joram nervous. Send another dude out. He goes get the same message. Listen, bro, if you don't join me, man, it's not going to be good for you. So he joins him. So now it's like, oh yeah, Jay, he's coming. Jay, he's coming to kill. So he goes and he takes his his bow and he just, you know smacks the arrow straight through Joram, kills him. Then he says, "Hey, whoever's on my side, throw Jezebel down." So she, they throw her down. Her blood sprinkles on the wall. She's busted up while she's falling. She hits the ground. Dogs eat her up. All right, kills spirit of Jezebel. And then he starts going for the head, Baal. All right, and to rid and purge Israel. So here's the thing. All right. Now, modern day, where, where we're living right now, application. We have a scenario where um, that, je- that, that, that we could be um, charged with the same charge that Christ uh, spoke to John on the island of Patmos regarding Thyatira, saying that we suffered the spirit of Jezebel. We suffered manipulation. We suffered this two-timiness. We suffered this... this um, uh, inconsistency in Christian living. We suffered the, the, uh, that, that uh, not completely giving ourselves over to the, to the Holy ghost and completely giving ourselves out to the kingdom of God. We could have suffered it. All right. By, and, and played, played, well, you know, uh, acts two thirty eight. but like, you know, those people, they speak in tongues too, and they cast out devils too. And they get, and so we give them a pass to you know, all the things that we know we're not supposed to be doing. We could have suffered it. Okay fornication meaning that again that blending of the two and then we in our minds begin to to try to rationalize it and it could very well be that there's things there's manipulative nature not nature but manipulative actions and habits that some of us could have because of that of of um uh, that's directly in alignment with what the holy ghost showed me in that vision that spirit of fear so you're suffering Jezebel because you're afraid of the change or you're afraid of what has to go or you're afraid of disconnecting from that person or you're afraid of maybe I'll just not look at the screen <laughs> but so you're afraid of these things and so you suffer the spirit of Jezebel in your life it could be don't get mad at me I'm just, I just, I don't, don't hate the don't hate the mail man I hate the message you're gonna hate something but don't hate the message either so you suffered it. Okay. Well, what is it going to take in order to defeat that spirit in your life? And if we, delete, if we purge ourselves of it we, and, and God decides to use us in leadership capacities, um, Jehu ended up becoming king. Okay. Uh, if, if, if God decides us to use us in these capacities or, or to, we're going to have to kill the, the spirit. And if we kill the spirit, it will, well, then it could very well be. That when we go out as a young man to, to or the young ladies to go out and minister, there's this free flow of the strength of the word of God. And that free flow and the strength of the word of God can start breaking chains while we're out and about doing our normal day-to-day happenings. So imagine this. Fear locks up a ton of young people. Okay, We'll huck and buck and shout and hoop and holler and cry and do all this stuff in the altars because then the altars is where we're less of fear we're fearless in the altar okay so what happens if we become fearless outside what happens if we become fearless in general what stops someone a young person who's full of the answer full of the healing power of god to go lay their hands on someone well i don't know fear okay you're scared bro go try it and jesus was all over the disciples says about fear about unbelief doubting and he's like you hard-hearted yeah, you know, you guys, that's not that's not the thing to do. Okay, so could it very well be he has the same attitude towards us? 
But then what does he do after that? You're hard hearted. How could you be that way? Now go out and do different. So wait, God, you're not going to choose anybody else? No, I'm, you, you still on the roster. Just go do different. Well, God, some of us have been praying, God, use me. God, I want to be used by you. God, help me. God did it, did, et cetera. Some of us have been praying that, asking for that. Well, then God's like, okay, well, you're going to, I'm going to have to come after that fear. And I'm going to have to shift your habits or I'm going to have to change your mindset. I'm going to have to pull those things out. You can't suffer the spirit of Jezebel. That spirit of Jezebel continues to bellow out their things that will make you fearful. I don't want to pray for them because dot, 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 insert the voice of Jezebel. That's embarrassing. Like, what if it doesn't happen? Like, real talk. Or like, um, your heart starts pounding, your mind starts racing. You're not even thinking clear thoughts. But it's the spirit of fear from Jezebel. Jezebel struck fear. If she, she was able to get the prophet, Elijah, the supernatural, a uh, type and shadow of the supernatural to be tied up because of fear. But Jezebel could not get Jehu to be tied up. So who's Jehu? What, what spiritual parallels does Jehu have? Jehu is, um, is, uh, is like, if you can think of the, the rage, the power, the strength, the warring characteristics of violence, the, 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 et cetera, of God. Remember, J, Jehu means Jehovah is he. So if you look at Jehovah and the Bible says he's a jealous God and he's, you know, we ought to fear him, et cetera, then it's like the embodiment of that is Jehu. And so what drives out the spirit of Jezebel is that very violent approach where, <laughs> to Jezebel. So Jehu's charging um, uh, Joram. He's charging Joram and, and Jezebel. And he's not listening to anything that is coming his way. Okay, so what happens when you not ignore, but you don't even recognize fear? Where can the manipulation, deceit, where can that hide? If you're willing, as a young man, some of us young homies are called to preach, okay, and you guys are going to be up in front of congregations, what happens if you have no fear about how the congregation is going to react and you're just there to do God's business? What happens when Holy Ghost shows you, hey, through supernatural discernment, that person is in secret sin and they need to repent. And so you're looking at them and they think, man, dude, but that person's a, he's the, that's the pastor's son. That's the this and that. Fear, 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 fear. You're worried about your pockets. You're, working, you're worried about getting invited back. You're worried about this, worried about that. Worried, worried, worried. You're fearful of it. Let's just keep it real. You're fearing it. You fear it. You fear it. You fear it. Okay. But what happens if you don't see that way? Because God worked all that out of you. He say, well, listen, brother. I have a love for you because of the, the ministry that I'm called to. I'm called to evangelize. I'm called to pastor, or preach, whatever. So my love to reach you, your soul, is it demands that I confront that sin that you're in that no one knows about. Now I was like, oh, he's operating. Oh, man, he's reading everybody's mail. But you're not looking to be supernaturally, divinely. You, that perfect love casts not that fear. And so you're going and you're reaching for that soul. Okay. But the process of, I don't want to say, how do you say, becoming fearless? I, I believe that there was somewhere inside of J. Hugh where he had such a desire, let's say, maybe a love to do the will of God to the utmost extent that it drove him past all the fear through, straight through the manipulative, deceitful um, nature of Jezebel. And he just ripped straight through her. Like, no, like no problems. He just got up there and said, hey, toss him down. Two or three eunuchs over there said, okay, bloop. That's all, that's all that had to happen. How many of us can attest? Now I can look at this. Right? Okay, How many of us can, test, can attest and say, you know, the fear was worse than the experience. In most cases, the fear was worse than the experience. You're about to bungee jump. You're about to whatever it is. And it's like, you're terrified. You're scared. Or maybe you have to say that thing. Maybe you have to stand up for yourself. Maybe you have to do this or do that, whatever it may be. And you're terrified. And then you do it and you're like, huh, huh, okay, Whew, man. I did it. Oh man. Okay. Oh, 
man, that was scary. Okay, man. Okay. And you're a okay. And you're fine. <laughs> okay. And it's like, you're okay. Okay. So if that's, if that's ever happened to anybody, um, just imagine if you approach all your fears like that, not that with that trepidation, but just like anything that you needed to do, you did it and you didn't even recognize your fear. So you just blew past it. That is J.H. moving past Jezebel. So the strength of the word of God. And that's why that young person in the vision was swinging that sword around because that's the strength of the word. It's the strength of God. It's the, it's the strength. So you say, this is the word of God. This is who I am. I, this is what I deserve. This is, I'm not, I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath and front and not behind. I am it. And so you're standing on the word and then all of a sudden your fears, well, okay, wait, we'll back up because you know why? It's, it's actually fabricated. It's, it's not there. Let's talk about it. Again, with this, and what I mean by that is we'll open up for discussion. But with this, um, this understanding is the spirit of Jezebel in, in, in uh, Revelation 2.20 was suffered by the church of Thyatira, meaning that they were patient with it. They didn't cast it out. And so what is ne ne needed to, to take care of the spirit of Jezebel? It's that strength of the word. It's, that, it's, that, it's the Jehu that plows through everything and anything. And will completely do the will of God. Jezebel leverages fear. She works in tandem with fear. Fear is like her favorite weapon. All right. Where if you um uh if you go to do the will of God, if you go to 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 do what God wants, she'll try to suffocate you with fear. Well, what happens when you don't listen to her fear? Because you're so in strength and or let's say you're so emboldened with the word of God, the 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 truth. Well, you blow past all that and you'll be able to kill the, all that manipulative, deceitful, and all that other stuff, that two-timiness in the church. So that's what the oh, the way you would see that is, you have a, oh gosh, okay, I think we're all, let me see. We're all like spiritually mature saints. Okay, so if I say this, it's not going to shake someone's foundation. Um, You have a gamey church, okay, church that plays the Pentecostal game, games, okay. And then you have the prophet, a true prophet of God that enters into that congregation. Okay. One of two things can happen. He can be arrested by the pressures, the political pressures, all that stuff <clears throat> that comes <clears throat> with messing with a certain um, tithe payer, you know, that's messed with messing with a certain family that has clout in the church. Like he could be arrested by that fear. That's the spirit of Jezebel projecting fear um, because that two-timiness, again, that, that fornication, that dabbling with the world and things of God at the same time, that's what Jezebel represents. Okay, so if that family is doing it, then what the, the spirit wants to keep them arrested with that and so project a fear of like, okay, so man, if I say this, I may never be invited back. If I say this, you know, dude, he, he may, he may hop on the phone and say, no, this, this, uh, this young man's out of pocket. He's out of line and um, X, Y, and Z. He may shut down all these different venues that I can, I could preach at. And you know, I know I just went full time. Like I literally just quit my job. Like I'm going to need, like, this is great. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. Am I getting where we're living? Allowing the spirit of fear to suffocate the prophetic or the prophet <clears throat> can lean into the word of God, lean into the strength of Jehu, Jehovah is he, lean into the strength and just plow through it. Hey, this is not a, the best analogy or, or saying, well, let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> like it is what it is, you know? And if he doesn't or he or she does not let the fear stop them, then um, I think that we will be, well, we will find ourselves at the fulfillment of that vision that the Holy Ghost gave us in um, last fall, which was that young person swinging the sword. And in the process of time, God allowed that young person to link up with a, uh, another individual of, of spiritual um, equality, but like equally spiritual. And one will put a thousand, two will put 10,000. They'll go out there and do ministry that way. So because that spirit of Jezebel is so prominent and she leverages fear, if God can get a prophet, the voice of a prophet, Elijah and Elisha and young child, whoever anointed Jehu, 
in tandem and in the strength of Jehu. So spirituality with the strength of the word of God. And if he can get, he's what's going to happen is you're going to start seeing people. They're going to start coming up against that fear and find out that the fear was false. But not only that, they're going to start casting out and driving out that spirit of Je as Jezebel. So now the church of Thyatira, if there's a church that has that spirit dominating it, they can't hide. They're not because that prophet is not going to, that prophet of God, that prophetess of God is not going to suffer that spirit of Jezebel and will kick it out. So there's no two timeliness. Either you're in or you're out, black or white. You know, we're going to get back to that type of preaching and, um, and that type of purging of churches. And so <clears throat> let's open up for discussion. That's, I, that's what I just felt to share with you guys. <laughs> okay. So hope you guys are not mad at me, uh, which I really don't care. <laughs> I got you that. <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's not one of the things, but um, yeah, it's, you know, that's, that's the deal. Robert Nicole. Okay, so um, before we continue with like the rest of the conversation, I do want to just say a little bit because of my in my testimony, I used to be a Jezebel. If you really really look look far into it, Robert can attest he knew me before I was saved. <laughs> he married he married me after I was saved. So there's that whole like, he saw me before and after. You did such a good job. <laughs> um. And I do want to say, like, the whole manipulative thing, working in fear, that's a legit thing. Like, that's what I used to do. I'd scare people to manipulate them. That was how I got what I wanted and how I wanted it. Thankfully, God showed me the right way of doing things and showing me that, like, using fear isn't a proper way to reach people with something that's positive for them, obviously, but also that what I was trying to do in my life with like how you were saying the feminist mentality, I'm not saying like I was what Robert would call a feminazi. Um, that's not what I was growing up, but I was the whole, like I was the follow along with, and I say this in the most respectful way ever, a liberal person um, in high school. I was like, I don't care what you do, but as long as you're, you're kind of still this leaning way, this is the type of people I want to associate myself. But then I was like, but I'm accepting of all. So I I really understand like what you're trying to say in the sense of the Jezebel spirit. So please like hear what Abiel's saying. And I genuinely say that, like hear what he's saying and realize that I even can attest to seeing that spirit in the church still. And it bothers me so much because it's like, I came from that. How is that still here in something so like true? that it makes me upset. So I don't know. I just, I wanted to say that before we continue. Yeah, that's, um, that's interesting. Uh, thank you for, for uh, sharing that. The reason why I say it's interesting is because literally I'm about to shut off the camera and I felt do a video on the Jezebel spirit. Okay. So I just started recording, left the camera on for like 50 minutes and I was doing research and I was like, Oh my gosh. And I was like, wow. Okay. There's this thing is all tied together. It's it's like um Second Kings talks about Jezebel, silent for the rest of the Bible until one verse, one passage of scripture that parallels beautifully. And um <clears throat> I think right now we're we're wrestling with that, especially with the um like woke left. Um I mean it, it it's like they if you notice that there's this whole fear of hurting people's feelings. That's a fear in and of itself. So it's like, and then people do get offended because the Bible says, you know, in the last days, you know, a lot of people are going to be offended. But it's, it's, do we not preach truth because people are going to be offended? Do we not say what's right because people are going to be offended? And I'm not talking about people being offended. I'm talking about close friends being offended. Siblings be offended. Which is like, if you love your Father, your mother, your brother, more than truth, more than me, because he's the way, the truth, and the life. You're not fit. So it's like, okay, I'm seeing all these parallels in the word, and it's like, I know where we're going. We're going to a place to where this generation is going to learn the beautiful art of being unfettered behind a pulpit. They're not going to be liked by a lot of people, but there's going to be a lot of people. But 
uh, what, were we, were, what were we supposed to be liked by a lot of people? But um, there's going to be a lot of, um, there's, there's going to be a lot of um, liberation that comes and you'll start seeing the gifts of the spirit poured out more because people are honest and truth full with each other and with um you know how many of you have this probably you know we're all probably guilty of this how many of you guys did not say that thing to a friend like you are the real friend but you just didn't say that thing because it's kind of like okay that's a little too like i don't want to hurt their feelings you you fear hurting their feelings okay i've done that where it's like you know or and then you get then you find out they're like dude why didn't you tell me i was like uh because i didn't want you to get mad like like, dude, I wouldn't have gotten mad. X, Y, and Z, explain it. You guys have this like, oh, you know, okay, we're still, you know, friends forever. This moment. And um, it's like, well, it's that was just made up in your head. That fear. So don't let fear stop you. And that's not one of those motivational quotes, you know, that the world can use. It's like, no, you're staring down the face of Jezebel. Don't let fear stop you. All right, so I'll go ahead and pass it over to, to Mike. And then after Cam, you can go uh, hop in enjoyed this because it was some conf confirmation you know and then we were talking about yesterday too because you know god showed me he's he's t t taking me to do some things in 2023 that i i, I was kind of like i don't think I, I don't really think i could do it god you know but as you broke down like that's not <laughs> of god and i've been getting real encouraged like like, yeah, you can do it because great is he that is in you that he is in the world. And it really hit me as you were talking how, like, I was trying, I, when you first said the statement, I was like, huh, I was trying to, you mentioned supernatural demonstration in order to operate in supernatural demonstration at any given time, you can't have fear. And I was thinking about it and I began to think about the verse that says how God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. So I connected that with the verse you were talking about, how perfect love casts out fear. So it kind of hit me that love and fear, it can't ex coexist together. You can't be full of both. <laughs> you can't, you know what I mean? Like if you want to be full of one, you can't have the other in it. Like you can't have a full cup of water <laughs> if, if you have some milk in there too. Like it's not full of water. You know, so they, they're directly opposed to each other. So you can't be full of love if you have fear in you you can't be so and I, I began to think about the seven seven deacons that were chosen in the bible and now they are full of the holy ghost and and how when you look at when you look at full of the holy ghost you look at that phrase it, it means to have the holy ghost permeating throughout your entire body in the original so it's completely flowing through through your body and in other words like we can't we can't be full of the spirit of god if there are other spirits taking up room in our body and so that really spoke to me, like, if I want to be, if, if I want to be full of the spirit of God, which is what it takes to operate in supernatural in any given mode of time, you got to be full. If you want to be full of the spirit of God, you can't have a spirit of fear. You can't have a spirit of pride. You can't have these other spirits inside of you and expect, because you have these other spirits inside of you, the Holy Ghost is not flowing throughout your entire body. If there's fear in your hands and you got the holy ghost everywhere else <laughs> you're not full of the holy ghost <laughs> so so even even just having some of that fear it might you might not be like oh i'm full on but just some hesitation like a little bit can because i've experienced that just a little hesitation where god was calling me to do something supernatural cause it to stop just, just a bit of fear just a just a bit of doubt you know <laughs> caused me to be like yeah I, I i don't know and and the other thing fear does too is like it causes you to be drawn in different directions, you know, kind of like anxiety does. Like the Bible talks about how like be anxious for nothing. And that word anxious literally means to be split in different directions. And so you kind of like, it's almost like you, so going into like, I guess using Elijah's example, like, like you talking about, he cut off prophet's heads. He, made, <laughs> he was just, and what fear caused you to do is to modify the amount of weight you assign to different factors. So it causes you to like, you used to view one thing as, oh, that's not that big of a deal. And now you view it as a big deal. Like it literally changes the way you you rank things. <laughs> you become a completely different person. And the next thing you know, you're in a cave. <laughs> and it's like, wait a minute, didn't you beat something like this before? <laughs> and you view it a completely different way because you're consumed by fear. You, you've assigned different weight to something than you have previously because you're no longer full of the spirit of God. You're full of the spirit of fear. You're no longer... 
you're no longer like the two spies saying, oh, those dinosaurs are that big. You're now like the other spies saying they're huge <laughs> because you no longer are full of the spirit of God where you say, greater is he that is in me than everything that's in the world. You're now full of spirit of fear. You're now full of Bethel. You're now full of Jezebel's husband. <laughs> that's like, and that that is all full of fear. <laughs> and now you see things through a fearful lens. You have a different pair of glasses on. You see things through a fear of lens instead of through a God lens. And so, yeah, I literally got all of that from what you just said. And it really helped me. Like, now I feel very, very confident. You know, I feel a lot better. I, I, I really need to be here. So I appreciate you sharing it. Hey, man, glory to Jesus. Thank you for uh, ministering to me, man. Just those, um, the parallels, the scriptural parallels. And then, you know, um, as as you said about being full of different spirits, like you can't have that. And that's one of the reasons the purging process is necessary for all of us saints. Got to get all that stuff out. So there can be a, this openness, this this emptiness that God can fill. And as as uh, Nicole, as you were saying, are you added, or that could have been you or Robert? I say both you guys. The Petersons added. They um there's a necessity like for you to be empty of your own human spirit, your own human will, your own human desires, so that you can be filled. Now I'll go ahead and pass it off to to Cam. But before I do, this is such a simple revelation, but it's so powerful. The greatest way to create hunger is to be empty. It is to be empty and stay empty. And so we want to hunger and thirst after God and after righteousness, but we're so stuffed with our own carnality, our own flesh, our own pride, our ego, whatever, all those things that just fill us, or we feel content with who we are, In, but yet we're not filled by God. And so we need to purge those things from our lives, leave that gaping open, like just empty stomach fast, man, not, but maybe literally, but like, like give it days so that the only thing that you want is the real substance of the Holy Ghost. And, and that's, that's a powerful thing. All right, uh, Cam. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that so much. The greatest way to create hunger is to stay empty. I was um I, I was I was discussing uh this morning with my mom. We were talking about the effective ways to build a church because all of my life I've seen, you know, as a as a pastor's kid, you know, all the different ways uh church members have she was talking about church member retention. You know, we can talk all day about outreach, but she she kept saying retention, retaining the saints that you have as well, and how there's this balance of, you know, uh, retaining the saints that you have and going out and making disciples. So, you, you know, you can get caught up in one and, you know, forget the other almost. And you, there has to be that balance. And, and uh, one of one of the things that we brought that came up in the discussion, we had our hearts really when it comes to doing both, because if you operate in fear of losing people, then you're not really do it. You're not really fulfilling the calling that God has for you because we're called to operate in love, which is the polar opposite of fear. So you you might drive. The, the thing about fear is it is it, it's it's unique in the sense that it will blind you to see people different from how God sees them. And that was that was something that I've I've definitely seen uh, growing up. Is you know you you know there's there's a there's a time when you tell some someone, hey, follow, you know, when Jesus would say, follow me. And then there were other times where Jesus commanded his disciples to shake off the dust of their feet and move on. And, you know, it's it's one of those things that and, and I think about I think about the prophets, too. You know, we, the symbolism of caves in scripture is so important because. It was a place of self-pity, it seemed, every time from that 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 fear. And it just it it blows my mind. Like they go from they go, for, you know, you've got Elijah and he's, you know, he he's slayed all of these prophets. And then one woman says, I'm gonna chase you, and he goes and hides in a cave. And it's it's just startling because you know, that when you know we say he he the voice of the lord came to him and he he came to the mouth of the cave well to me it just seems like metaphorically it would have that fear would have swallowed that cave would have swallowed him had he not responded to the voice of the lord and even david even david you know like he was he was in that cave he was in that place of self i don't i, I don't i believe it was it was some some form of self pity he was is in that place of fear and 
I, I've heard that geographically from that cave David was at, he could see the valley where he saw his victory against Goliath. And so I think, I think too, you cannot see the victories and you cannot see those things if you don't like, if, if you don't look at, um, if you don't look at things from a perspective of love, if you're, if you're operating in a spirit of fear, it's, it's, you're not going to see, you're not going to see anywhere outside of the mouth of the cave you're not going to see anywhere past that your motives are going to be wrong your desires are going to be perverted and it just i don't know it just it's it's a it's 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 two different worlds we were talking about that today it's like if you live in the world and you operate in love and you're not necessarily fearing about you, you know fearing what others think and you're not fearing you know you know the odds that are stacked against you and that it it's a really a place of like you said earlier it's like what is fear at this point like i don't even recognize that that feeling anymore i don't even recognize that opposition anymore all i know is that all that i need is supplied by god's love and so i i think i think the contrast is is uh i think it's i think it's interesting to know yeah for sure there's a lot of great stuff coming out of um this discussion and uh again it's just it, it's god's i really believe like that word that he gave in the fall of last year like we're all walking through that um because i know that uh if you're a young person you have fears you have certain you know fears about the future fears about the right now and etc and those and we know that those things are opposed to the working of God in our lives, but we succumb to it. And um, I think God is is right now kind of uh, rattling our cage, shaking his stuff, say, hey, you can come free. Yeah, you can come free. This is how you do it. You know, and he's using the um, uh, specifically, like we're talking about fear, but um, fear wasn't, uh, fear, fear, it's not just uh, Jezebel and that spirit that uses fear. I mean, there's sometimes you, you're, you fear, um, like I'm thinking of Gideon right now, where he's like, uh, he saw himself inadequate. I don't think I can do this, et cetera. No spirit of Jezebel there. But in this instance, um, <laughs> uh, if we suffer fear, if we allow fear or the, or specifically in, in the Revelation 2.20 passage, um, that spirit of Jezebel, that manipulative spirit, we, we will allow, we'll continue to allow sins in the church if we don't confront it and that ex, um jezebel doesn't look, like to be exposed so um that exposing of that we have to have the boldness the character in order to do it and um i think we're in a good position being that we're being led into that for those who are, i think all of us are going to be used i think all of us are supposed to be used actually that's what the bible says in uh the gifts of the spirit in in um in certain offices fivefold ministry etc um, but, uh, your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. We're the sons, we're the daughters. And, um, we're going to, we're going to step into certain offices. And I believe there's going to be strong prophets of God and prophetesses of God, or maybe the spirit will move on you. And you're willing to be in that moment, the strong prophet, the strong, um, prophetess that will deal with the, the sins in the church Call a spade a spade. That's wrong. And, you know, not care about the ramifications, repercussions. Um, I, I'm going to go over to the chat real quick. Um, Alyssa says, I think it's uh, progression. If we cast out all the fear through love, then we have power and a type of sound mind that cannot be pushed around by other people's opinions or current current culture. Amen. Yeah, self-confidence. All right. Um, Precious, go ahead and and uh, say what you're going to say. Go ahead. Preach, girl. Okay. Prophetess. I just wanted to swing this from like a different angle um, from like life experience and some of the things that I've personally experienced as well as like talk to other people and they have mentioned. I love the fact that we're talking about Jezebel because this is something that like I have actually had to witness within my own family and how it pretends to comply. It pretends to have obedience and it pretends to have sacrifice and submission, but really it's self-serving. And it has an agenda on the side. And one of those things that it does to serve its agenda sometimes is like Abel mentioned, it has fear. If you break down fear and you look at fear and what it is, 
it's nothing more than division. It divides you from your goal. It divides you from your focus. It divides you from where you're supposed to be. So if God has anointed you to do something and you feel that choke on the inside, like, oh, what if someone judges me? What if somebody has something to say? What if I'm not qualified? You're no longer focused on the goal. It kind of goes back to that story of walking on water. It's like if Peter would have just looked at Jesus and focused on Jesus and not looked at the water, he never would have been afraid. But the fear and the focusing on something that is not of God is what gave him the division. And then the Lord said to him, ye of little faith, because you allowed your fear to divide you from your anointing, from your calling, from who you're supposed to be. And as the church, I feel like to truly unify we have to do a self-check within each one of ourselves and say, you know what, am I going to allow this thing on the side to divide me from where I'm going, divide me from where I'm supposed to be? That's that's like the biggest takeaway because if you if you don't allow it to divide you, then there is no Jezebel. Not for you anyway. Might be for your friend, might be for your partner, but it won't be for you because that's her catalyst. That's That's her big white horse. You're going to say, oh, wait, wait, don't do that. That might, that's scary, right? You don't want to do that. And then this is another thing. Your fear will provide you another solution that's not of God. It'll say, why don't we just take the back door? Let's, let's take the long way around. Let's not take, let's not take Jesus way. Let's take the back way. And then you find yourself in a bunch of trouble, a bunch of issues. And then you realize, oh no, now I'm disobeying the scripture that says, his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. You're no longer doing that no more. You no longer think his thoughts are higher than mine. Now it's about you. It's about how you feel. It's about what you think should happen. And again, more dividing you from where you're supposed to be. So it's like, if we do a self-check within ourselves and we say, you know, precious, what am I, what am I needing to, to, to not allow to divide me from where I'm supposed to be? Uh, my alignment with God, my calling with God, it don't matter where it is. It's like, you guys got to really look at it and say this fear, I'm not going to allow it to divide me. I'm not going to allow it to take my attention away because I need to walk on the water. I need my story to be the story that God has willed for my life. You have to begin to speak life and not death because that's what fear is. Fear is going to lead you to death. It's not going to lead you to everlasting life. And that's where we're going to. Fear is the complete opposite. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Believe it. If you don't believe it, then you're always going to have fear in your life. You're always going to have Jezebel sitting over in the corner telling you what you can and cannot do. When the only one who, who, who directs your path, it says, I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Did Jezebel say that? No, she did there's only death in that path. So, you know, that's all I had to say. I just wanted to swing it from a different point of view. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get preach on everybody, but I just love this. No, no, no. What, what, what I don't think you realized is you outlined Elijah's journey. It disconnected him. That fear for Jezebel disconnected him from what he was doing. From what he was supposed to, he was murdering on it. He was after the head of Baal, and um, in 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 the in Israel, and my gosh, and uh, but my goodness, okay, let's let's stay on this though. And then it caused him, as Cam was saying, I mean, that that uh, that cave, that place of death, that fear, like you were saying, precious, it drove will drive you to a place of death, and not a place of life. And that's exactly what a lot. And so God's shaking the mountain and there's a whirlwind and, and it's through his still small voice. The strength of the shaking, the strength of the, the wind, the sh strength of all that. Can it didn't work. It wasn't strong enough. But the still small voice, Je Jehovah is he, the word of God. I don't want to say it was like manifest in flesh, like if it was... If, jehu was um was christ but what i'm saying is is jehu embodying that okay in his role in his position the reason why he's penned in scripture what did that do 
so we see oh, okay I'm, I'm, and you guys understand i'm not i'm not recanting one is i'm not saying anything but what i'm what i'm paralleling is the the word the voice the truth god god meant elijah to pull him out of that place of fear and death and then god that same word we can say moving to slay jezebel two different men in two different positions the the supernatural the prophetic was manipulated was caused to go from one path to another by jezebel and, and uh, the spirit of fear that she works in tandem with that fear drove so what saved what could what can save us from from uh being driven to a place of death the word of god but what can save us from in and keep us in the moment where we have to stare jezebel down we have to stare through our fears and stare down it's the same thing it's the word the word will save us there the word will save us here but the thing is is that when jehu oh god have mercy man when jehu began to go just i'm coming for you and it wasn't like he was coming for Jezebel, real talk, okay? He, he was coming for all the wickedness, all that, the entire house of, of uh, Ahab and, and Joram. He was going to kill Joram. He was going to kill, if he, if he was just coming for Jezebel, he would have stopped at Jezebel, okay? But that's not, that's not what he was there for. He was there to cut off the entire house, all the worshipers, all that. So that's what we see him do. But in the process, that spirit of fear, that Jezebel spirit, tries to um uh well again not that we see her demonstrate in any way but um it, when jehu was going after but jehu starts to go straight for it and what does jezebel do nothing she didn't do anything she couldn't do anything so what did the fear do the fear couldn't do anything the fear couldn't stop him jezebel couldn't stop him Okay, Jezebel and the spirit of fear could not stop Elijah from coming out of that cave when the, the word of God beckoned him. Jezebel can't stop the word. Je the, the fear can't stop the word. If we surrender to it, like Elijah surrendered to it, even though he did kind of like, you know, it took him a while to get there. He kind of got off a little bit. But And like Jehu surrendered to it, you'll be able to look straight into your your the thing that you need to deal with. As a, as a man, as a young man, as a woman, a young woman, as someone in a leadership position, whatever, you'll be able to stare that thing straight in the face. And all the fears, the things that you're supposed to worry about or whatever, from tackling that thing, from killing that thing completely, you won't feel it. It won't affect you. Okay, let me say it like this. It's, it's not that we're waiting for not feeling the fear. It's that you're so focused on the word of God, what God told you to do. You're so anointed, not so anointed, but you're anointed to do that thing. And you're given to that thing. And you're you're willing to stare it in the face and say, no, that thing is not going to conquer me. That thing is not going to, I will win. And you start pushing in that direction. Now it's like, well, that that's the whole, have you ever felt you know very scared about doing something, but you got over it and you, and you took the action and you found out that it wasn't that bad? That's that. Where it's like, no, Jezebel, you're not stopping me. I'm getting closer. No, this spirit of fear is not stopping me. I'm getting closer. Then all of a sudden, you kind of feel, you kind of realize that. Wait a second, I, I I pushed, and that first thing that came against me, it, it, it's not, it's not, it's not here no more. It's not stopping me no more. And then that second thing, and then you start getting a little more. You're like, wait a second, that first thing that tried to stop me, that first little thought of fear, that I didn't let that stop. So I'm greater than that. And then the second one, then it's like, okay, no, hold on, wait. Like you got the whole thing twisted. And then we then we'll come to find out that all that fear that we were experiencing was just like the fear in the vision. It was fake. It wasn't there to begin with. And then at that point, now our faith is in is even more even higher. It's more emboldened to demonstrate to move. Whew, because we because now we're kind of like, wait a second. I know who I am. I got the word of God on my side. I can do these things. And then when God calls on you. To, to, to preach against that, to teach against that, to talk against that. Now you're like, all right, God, I was rocking with God before. I'll rock with him again. It's working because that fear stuff wasn't, wasn't reality, wasn't true. Oh, God, have mercy. If we, oh, God, I see um, a number of us being, being liberated into a life of, um, of, uh, I don't, this is the only way I can say is limitlessness. 
And this isn't like, oh, this is like marketing terms or like, you know, cool jazz words or buzzwords. No, 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 no. Is that you have aligned, you will align yourself or you have aligned yourself in this. You know, what I'm saying is that you aligned yourself with the word of God and the word of God can't be limited. And so you're, you're, you're living in his path, which is limitless. The only limitations you have is obedience to, the, to his word. And so that's the Mary, just so you know, okay, with God, all things are possible. That's what I mean by limitlessness. So it's like, so, so-and-so, just so you know, you staring through and coming straight for the jugular of the things that need to be purged from the church, et cetera that Jezebel spirit and the fear and other you looking through that all of a sudden you're like, man, dude, I'm pretty limitless. Not because it's you, not because it's me. It's because you're operating in the limitlessness of the word of God. And that is such a um, humbling thing that God would allow us to link up with his limitlessness. That blows my mind. And so um, God have mercy. Thank you, Jesus, because we wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. And I believe that's where the Holy Ghost is taking his church. That's where the Holy Ghost is taking his young people. Good Lord, have mercy. Um, uh, all right, Robert, Nicole. There's so many thoughts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I kind of want to kind of jump back to what Cam was mentioning about caves. Um, caves in the Bible were where people went to go die. If they were expecting to die or if they had... You know, if they were kind of giving up, they went to a cave. And Cam mentioned David when he went to uh, the cave when he was running from Saul. Saul was out to kill him. So he tried to go to the enemy's ground. The enemy kicked him out. They didn't want him there. <laughs> so he's stuck between these two and he's alone. He has nowhere to go. He doesn't belong anywhere. And yet he has that call of God on his life that he's supposed to be king. He he may not have known it at the time, but a greater call on his life is that he was going to be a an ancestor to Messiah. He was going to be Israel's great king, aside from Messiah, of course. And yet, in this moment, he goes to the cave, maybe expecting to die, maybe expecting to just live out the rest of his days there, totally hopeless and totally alone. And yet, it's in that cave at his lowest, one of his lowest moments that 400 men show up outside and they are Israel's most down on their luck, most hopeless people. <laughs> you know, 400 guys who are distressed, indebted, and discontented, which are very nice ways of saying, of describing these individuals. And those 400 people become David's military. In his darkest moment, he leads people to him that he can minister to. But not only does he get the opportunity to minister to these individuals that are hopeless, these, these individuals come back and help him take the throne. They not, he not only ministers to them, but they push him into his calling, a deeper calling. So when you're in the cave, um, call the altar call now. <laughs> but then later on after he's king he still has these 400 guys surrounding him and protecting him and uh, advancing the military mm -hmm. and when he doesn't know what to do his his 400 guys are turning on him because everything they've had is destroyed and he doesn't know what else to do they want to kill him they've turned on him completely the bible says David got alone and encouraged himself in the Lord. Nobody else was going to do it for him. The fear was so intense that I thought I had something going. I'm king of Judah. I'm going to be king of Israel. And now it looks like everything is, is done. All I can do is go pray. All I can do is tell myself what God says about me. In Proverbs, it says life and death are in the power of the tongue. It matters what you say about yourself, especially when you're when you're down, when you're in that dark place in that cave. The difference between you staying in that cave and you coming out of that cave very well could be a matter of what you 
say about yourself. And then one last thing. I forget which prophet it's in. But uh, the Bible says the word of God does not return void. It accomplishes what it's set out to do. I think that's Isaiah. And there's a little caveat right after that that says whether it's like the rain or it's like the snow. I forget they had snow in Bible times. It just doesn't make sense to me. But rain is is already liquefied. Rain is already a, available to drink and water plants and all of these things. But rain, uh, excuse me, snow has to melt. So even though you're in the cave right now, even though you're you may be tormented by fear right now, the word of God on your life is for you to be an overcomer, more than a conqueror. You, you are a king and a priest. That word of God might be like the snow. It might take some time. And there's a process to it. But that's, that's end goal for your life. That's where you will be. Man, that is, that is so good. That is so good. There, there's, um, it's like what you mentioned that cave, and then Dave, David's men show up. Man, it's just like, and your help comes, and it doesn't. It, it's not the prettiest. It's not the the most glamorous. It's not what you, what you uh would, if you had to pick, what you would want to have with you, but it's what you need, and 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 God provides. That is so awesome, uh, Cam. Yeah, I feel like I'm milking the cave references here because there's just so much there. I was I was telling Robert earlier and I, I was like, dude, like have, have I mentioned the cave stuff before? Like I don't even remember, but I feel like I have like at least six or seven times because it's just so, so good. I remember touring a cave once and they told us not to touch the cave. They told us not to touch it. It would harm the natural process of the cave. And we were told that it would cause the cave to like break down. And when you do the research, uh, one guy said that you leave behind oils and amino acids, dead skill and skin and dust. It says just tiny amounts radically alter the growth of the cave, which I suppose in turn would cause the cave to kind of break down, deteriorate and could literally cave in. So in the, in, in the kind of metaphorical, you know, if if you're in a place of fear in the cave and you're in your presence, you just stay there long enough. That thing is going to swallow you. That thing is literally going to swallow you. And, you know, it blows my mind, uh, you know, that that it's like it was dangerous enough already to be kind of, uh, you know, standing around in fear. But you go hide in a cave in a place of death. Really, it's a tomb. It's a tomb. Really, I, I feel like that's where. Uh, that's that's the symbolism of the tomb that Jesus was laid in. He wasn't meant to stay in there. Uh, the natural process, it, it would have there would be this deterioration of, it, you know, had Jesus not resurrected, it would it, there would be this deterioration. He, he's salvation itself. He is the way, truth, and life. The fact that he came out of that is powerful, and I, I believe that the imagery there is it you know there's a messianic imagery and elijah coming out of the cave and david coming out of the cave it's that resurrection it's that coming out of that and that that's enough to get me excited but i've got some questions real quick make sure we're still on track i've got some... <laughs> so the spirit of jezebel when we're talking about the spirit of jezebel are can we tie that can we say that is a spirit of division is that is that is that a correct thing to say I guess um, biblically, I, I think I, I, that's definitely an element. Um, I don't know if I personally don't know the the how do you say it? like the root of it because um, when so we're talking about the spirit, not Jezebel herself, but the spirit of right. Jezebel in um, Revelation twenty or two twenty, it ties straight to fornica t- ties straight to fornication. And meets off their idols, so which you know division, I guess, but and fornication, you know, some it's like you divide yourself from a co- your covenant with God, but it's it seems to be more aligned with lust and desire, but with all the elements that that we've been talking about, like hinged into it. So I think that uh, I don't know. Um, it sounds <clears throat> bad, but. I have a book from from um brother uh who is it 
talking about devils and stuff like that but like i don't know demonology and stuff um so like i don't know like what it completely is like what it'd be at the root i think it's like a amalgamation of just a ton of different um deals so but i don't know uh, someone else may have read a book or something that they could share but yeah 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 that's um brother white's book yeah so yeah and so um but specifically that spirit of jezebel i don't i do know it's manipulative it's it's um uh but it has a tie with like lust i guess division you know uh, but also um uh that manipulative nature which i i i don't think right. and, you can isolate there's that stuff. element of distraction too and distraction from purpose right yeah so but i don't i don't know if there's like one thing i think she she or it is like again like an amalgamation where it's like because manipulation it doesn't directly tie in with lust at least i don't think so because you can manipulate without i guess you manipulate your own way which is lust as a desire so i i don't know i couldn't give you a solid answer i think it's just um and like i would say like an amalgamation yeah. With that, with that, and I, I did have one follow up question. This is this is all I all I really had. And with that, you you had mentioned that the the calling against Jezebel, and and, and I want to make sure I understand this right. It's leading young people. It's it's to operate a place of discernment. And you had mentioned, you know, like like you said, going for Baal's head, you know, going for that. And then that's when that's what the spirit of Jezebel poses itself against. Is, is that correct? Yeah, the word of God and the word of God is truth. There is no variable in it. So there's no shadow of turning it. There's nothing in it. And so Elijah brought down the word of God. God manif manifests itself in, in himself in a way of fire and, and judgment and stuff. And so Jezebel tries to leverage fear in order to get uh, see. She doesn't like the word. She doesn't like the prophets. She killed all the prophets except for the 100 that um that one guy saved. Um, and, and where she didn't like Jehu, like they, she did not like the word of God. So, um, yeah, it's definitely against the word. Yeah. So, so, so when there's sin in the camp, all right, that directness, deal with that thing, stone that person, you know, who's causing it, that directness is what Jezebel doesn't like. And that's why in 2023, we can't be direct. We have to be like, oh, well, you know, this person feels this way. And so, you know, they identify as this and, and like in Canada, they're trying to, um, legalized pedophilia oh because they feel this way and this not but wrong is wrong right and that's the end times of right being called wrong and wrong being called right so we're living in that but it's propagated by the spirit of jezebel so it's like we're going to be the most offensive group on the planet <laughs> they the absolute church and we're getting we're going to go back to that so there's going to be a lot of us young people if you want to look make it very tactical or tactile um and something that we can actually touch in, in a modern day world, it's no, that's wrong and calling it for what it is and shooting like straight as an arrow with everything, you know, no, the charismatics aren't right. You know, no, the Trinity is wrong, you know, and, and, and just shooting it and we will become the most hated, but we weren't trying to be everybody's friend either. So, so someone else can go. I was thinking about you and Kim's discussion about the spirit of Jezebel and thinking about it. And, and I feel like, I feel like the goal of the spirit of Jezebel is, is like you like you said, Ava, it's the, it's the lust. And like you were saying, Cam, it's, it's that lust and selfishness. And to be motivated, the spirit is driven by its own desires. And I feel like the byproduct of that is is division. You know, like the, the goal is self-seeking to have power, but the byproduct of that is division because a self-centered agenda does not fit with the body of Christ, which has a Christ-centered agenda. So like I was thinking about how the Bible talks about how the church has the same spirit, the same mind, the spirit of selfishness and the things of God. So what happens when we we allow this spirit of Jezebel to intimidate us in our local body and we don't do anything is it's kind of like what I said earlier, but on a macro level. So like on a micro, I was saying how if you want to if we want to operate in the supernatural, we have to be full of the Holy Ghost and have it flowing throughout our entire body and even allowing just like a little bit of spirit of pride or, or these other spirits to enter it it interferes with that it causes the vision in yourself on a macro level if you have a church full of the spirit of god and full of love and full of these things and you allow 
a person perhaps influenced and led by the spirit of Jezebel to come in and, and do their thing. It just that one person can disrupt the entire body of Christ, just like that one spirit you allow into your body as an individual can disrupt you and cause you to be divided as a person. That one person who's full of the spirit of Jezebel can cause that whole local body and local church to be divided. And I've actually seen this first. We actually have to, you know, leave certain because they they allowed stuff like that to happen. So it's it's important that we, you know, as a church, we look out for that too. Cause it could happen on a micro where it's just happening to you, but it could also happen on a macro. And then my last thing I was gonna say was how like I was thinking how the spirit of fear can impact our prayers. I was thinking about the verse that says, Let a mask in faith, nothing wavereth. For he that wavereth is driven is driven by the wind and tossed. So it can affect our it can affect our prayers too. Because we start praying these little prayers instead of these big prayers. Right? We we have faith in God for the small things, but when we have giants, it's like, nah, that's too big for God. Right? <laughs> like that's 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 that, that's too much. Because we we no longer ask in faith. It says let him ask in faith. We're just asking. We're no longer like, oh, we're no longer asking God to heal somebody. We're like, God, if I mean if it's in your will, if you wanna like uh, maybe you <laughs> so, so it's a total switch up. But but yeah, th those are just some Bruh, that is powerful. Cause you know, when when um Cam had you mentioned the 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 vision, it's like you know, okay, yeah, I, I I was thinking, like I said in my earlier amalgamation, like it's all combined, but Mike, you're saying a byproduct because that's so true. When we follow after our own lusts, the byproduct is division, division from God, division. So let's say all that in the world, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride. If you fall off through lust of the flesh, your own desires, well, I want this and I want to do that. And I, and then you become a selfish person, dude. What does it do? It divides. It divides people from you, relationships. So there cannot be unity. The lust of the eye. So, you know, every, you want everything that you see, or you don't put a governor on your side. And then, you know, uh, let's use it in a, a relationship. <clears throat> then, uh, you know, your spouse is like, dude, your eyes are going everywhere. You, you're looking in different directions, dude. You, your, 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 your discipline isn't there, and it's not just discipline, but it's like you want something else. And then there's that that division that comes. And then the pride of life, like, God, I got this. I can do this by myself. And I have, you know, I'm making, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars a year. I got this guy. And it's like, what in the world? So now you're divided from God. So I think Cam was looking into it very, very accurately. Okay, there's division in that thing. There's division in that spirit. But the I think that the byproduct is um is is where it's at. Now, I don't know, you know. I stand to be corrected from uh, Brother White's book, but the um, I think that is a very, 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 very accurate assessment. Drive after your lust, your own desires, and division will ensue. And I think that is one of the primary focuses of the spirit of Jezebel, because now it's like there's different orders in the churches and now there's different classes and this person sits with that person. There's cliques and there's the untouchables and all this stuff. And it's like, dude, man, there's a lot of carnality. Well, maybe we suffer the spirit of Jezebel. All right, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to keep talking. Exactly. Right. My, my bad, Ava. There was one thing I, I forgot to like, what I was kind of talking about with the macro is sometimes we forget this. I mean, Josephine were talking about this yesterday. Like demonic possession is a thing. People can be possessed by these spirits. Like a person can walk in a church with a spirit of Jezebel. And, and if you don't address that, it shakes the whole thing up. So we, we gotta be like that stuff is real, man. So we gotta we gotta be like prayed up. So and when we are operating in the supernatural and with the the Elijah the Elijah, let's say, but we have the boldness that comes with the Jehu, that's still not going to be able to last. That's not so so what what we can literally is cut what we can literally do is cut off division from the from the root and and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Cause we're like, no, what you need to do is you need to die out to your flesh. What you need to do is you need to get over your lust or get out. Now people oh, that's not the love of God. Well you okay, yeah, no, they're all throughout the New Testament. Jesus is like, hey, you it's either my way or the highway. And we have not heard preaching like that in a long time. I remember preaching like that. And it was like, I was like under 12, you know, and then you, and then it's, it's like, we have not heard that type of preaching or it's like, no, you, you know, fish or cup bait, you either do the will of God, you do what God says, it was in the Bible or you don't. 
And it's that clear. And I think there's a very, there's a tremendous lack of clarity. And we can see that on the world stage, you know, it is, uh, well, let's say at least the Western world is there's a lot of confusion. All right. Someone mentioned the distractions. Cam mentioned distract, distract, distraction, spirit of Des- Jezebel, right? Somebody. And, um, and so all these different, like this cloud of, of, of confusion, someone needs to preach a straight some, and we're going to get back to that. That's what we're going to be like. Some of the most hated people on the planet is um, because we're not going to be standing for what's in this world. But the problem is that the world is in the church. So, so, you know, we got worldliness in our hearts, real talk, you know, and just being real. So it's like, like you said, Mike, on a micro, take care of it, cut it from like, you, what we got to do is got to take care of that. Um, because it has affect our, affected our macro. But we as the, the, the church is coming up, we're going to have to do that. And um, I think we're going to do it. And we're going to do it in strength. And I think that's what the season's about. All right, go ahead, Cam. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so I wonder, <laughs> I wonder if the veil that was tore when Jesus said it is finished it's on the cross was, was if, if we say the, the spirit of Jezebel includes spirit of division ultimately i suppose division you know the the veil that was in front of the ark of the covenant that was sim- that was symbolic of god's presence and it seems to me that on the other side of that was this the spirit of religion that had divided <laughs> i'm telling you i'm telling you and and the spirit of jezebel says oh you can have both you can have both you know you can have you can have spirit of religion over here you can have you know, the, the benefits of God's glory over here. And that's, that's the basis in which those who were committed were slain by Jezebel. So when that was torn, I feel like that was the era of new covenant benefits. The moment that happens is the moment that the spirit of Jezebel is, <laughs> oh, woo, is the moment that it's torn. And the thing is, the spirit of Jezebel, it's, I think somebody, the, the spirits are trying to hang that curtain back up. And it's, I, I, I've, uh, when you were talking about how we are called, how we are called to discern that and then go for its head. That's when the spirit of Jezebel is trying to, you know, that's, it's like, oh, well, no, no, we need, we need, we need, we need more perhaps structure. Maybe we need, maybe we need a little more uh liberation or maybe we need to and, and it's always kind of this it kind of comes as it should be like uh more of a systematic approach when it's more of no maybe we need to tap into the spirit and the truth it's not by our might it's not by our power it's by the spirit of god and so that's that's the basis in which the the veil was torn i have i have a belief that david was a man after god's own heart for this reason um he knew what to do with idols. He knew what to do with the spirit of Jezebel. Because you had mentioned Saul. <laughs> oh man. You he had you had mentioned Saul when was 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 it King Agag that he was supposed to kill? Am I getting that name right? Okay, all right. So King Agag, you know, Saul was he was commanded to kill everybody. He was commanded to kill, you know, everything. And he keeps the king in hostage and the prophet has to slay has to slay what was left by that that which he which was in that sense i suppose a representation of that spirit of just that idolatry because saul was not operating out of a spirit of the he wasn't operating in the anointing he was operating out of a spirit of fear because i think somewhere deep down inside saul kind of saw his kingship about ready to be stripped from him like he knew something was off because at some point i think he understood that hey he knew he was he was disobeying he's disobeying by doing this and how does he cover it up he's like oh well i thought we'd you know sacrifice you know i thought we'd you know we'd we'd have a little structure here we'd have like a little you know sacrifice and we would you know we'd offer some and it took the prophet to come in and say no and tear that veil in two and say no no and he split it up, you know, if you if you read it, it says he took King Agag and he had to split him up in little pieces. It was, it was, and, and I imagine that imagery just stayed in Saul's mind. But David was the stark contrast of that. And this is why I think that the scripture records David as a man after God's own heart, because he comes in and he says, 
it, when when there was idolatry in the camp, it was uh, David knew what to do with idols. They were destroyed. They were burned. They were, and he says, "We cannot have this. We cannot have this. We serve. We we are we are a monotheistic people. We are oneness people, you know. And and we don't need more structure per se from from the, that that the spirit of Jezebel is trying to convey that we need." And it's that veil. I I believe it. It's that veil. It's under the guise of religion that we think, oh, well, you know, we need we need more of this. We need more of that. No, we need more of the spirit of God. We need more holiness. We have more reasons in 2023 to be unified than we do divided. And we have our reasons to be divided from the world, from the spirit of Jezebel, from idolatry. But we have more reasons within our body to be unified. And like you said, I think we're going to get back to black and white preaching. I've been, I've been feeling that I've been feeling that. And it's, it's just, it has gotten a hold of me. And all of this is such a confirmation to me. This has been such a good discussion. I have enjoyed this so much. No, but what, what, to what you're saying, Kim, about that, that veil is, is, um, and I put it in the, in the chat is what caused the veil to tear? Mm. It was the dead flesh. So that parallels directly oh. <laughs> with Revelation 2.20. You suffer, what was it? it? What was it all about? Lust. It was about fornication and, and, and the, the belly, the, the desires, the taste buds, the, the meats offered to idols. And of course, you know, Jesus talking to John on the island of Patmos is not strictly speaking of natural fornication, natural meats. No, he's talking from a spiritual standpoint as well, let's say. Because you know, obviously both are terrible, but um, from a spiritual standpoint, and so that that when the when flesh died, that's when the liberation came, and then you look at like what you're talking about, uh, David, and how David, um, uh, oh gosh, there's as, as him after as a man after God's own heart, there is a um, or maybe it was Saul that you had mentioned. There there is something that you had mentioned that got me thinking about the the rending and the tearing and yeah it was Saul because Saul he he uh that wait here three days I'll be back well we got to go to battle it's day four and the sacrifice and he's waiting he's waiting he's let me do it so he has a confrontation with Samuel and as Samuel's turning away he he you know he he tears it or maybe that was a different time I can't remember but Saul knew he in short Saul knew he was he, there was something wrong like he had mentioned there's something wrong he, he, I'm on my way out right and so what happens with, with um, Agag, yeah, it was that time that he wore his, his cloak. But, um, but what, did, what did the prophet do? He didn't, he didn't uh, okay, I understand. You know, okay, let's bring this together. Let's, let's, uh, no, he said, no, this was what you were supposed to do. And he knew he, he could have been killed for coming against the king that way. But he, he Anyway, love not life to the death, but he still preached it straight and he fulfilled the purpose of God, the desire of God, at least. Well, not completely because he couldn't kill everybody because he, he killed a Agak. He did what he could. But um, but uh, uh, there was that correction that coming back to killing the um, the what God wanted to be dead. And that was Agak. And and um and well all the other Amalekites, but again he couldn't get to them. So, but it, it's like it's like there's a there's a strong tie between that spirit of Jezebel and that dead flesh, and it's going to take the prophetic. Okay, it's going to take the prophetic, and the prophetic anointing. The pro prophet being Elijah, Elisha. Elisha was bold against her too. Um, Samuel was bold against. Him. Okay, it's going to take the prophet, and the anointing, the prophetic anointing. To come with that spirit of Jehu that, no, 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 this is the word of God. This is truth. And we're going to have to charge into it. And honestly, I just don't think that we're all prepared for that yet. <laughs> That's why I think God's going to give us a processing time. And I think 2023 is going to be a time of processing where we're, we're going to we're going to get some resolves and get some convictions and get some things about us. We're like, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No, that's wrong. And we're going to get back to that. God's going to lead us on a spiritual journey, each of us in, in our own way, to this place of I can't suffer that in my life. No, that's that's my that's that's a conviction or that's that's a lust. I know that's I'm not going to let that live. And because you kill it in your life, then you get the victory over it. Now you go to someone else's life. And the thing is that we there's a big question mark. If I come at them, are they going to accept me into their house? Okay. 
or are they go- or am I going to have to dust off my feet? I don't know what the city's going to do. I don't know what the people are going to do. I don't know what the congregation is going to do. I don't know what the preachers are going to do. I don't know wh- wh- whoever you got to speak to. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, but I got to preach it. I got to preach it. I got I got to I got to I got to go for it. I got to do the word the word and the will of God. And when you do the word and the will of God and you push push through, then you find out, okay, who's on the Lord's side. And you stand. And and then truth is per it, it just begins to be permeated throughout um all the places where truth is under attack right now, which a lot of it is in the West. Okay. Well, well with that, when the veil was torn and when it was torn and there was it, there was something that broke open and i believe it's the spirit of revelation and it fell on those who i think least expected it because he there was the roman centurion who looks over and says truly this was the son of god like out of no and i believe that is the harvest that is the heart i mean i mean like the housekeeping stuff that's taken care of like the house has been cleaned and then everybody else around it all of a sudden says truly this is the son of god the oneness message was conveyed was understood just clipped and 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 i'm seeing so much debate about the godhead and it makes no sense we could go in circles all day but there needs to be a breaking internally within our church there needs to be something there there's a spirit that's la- that's leeching on to people where they're following after their own lust, causing division, which is the spirit of Jezebel, which is that veil, which is that whatever it is that that whatever it is that needs to die out. And it's and, and, and this is why I think the world around us has just not had that. Well, truly, this is the son of God, because they don't see it in us yet. They don't see that that they don't see the sword pulled out of the sheath. You know, I, I see that and it, it, it burdens me. No, that that that's super good. That, that I'm I'm just I'm thinking about a number of things right now, but that that's awesome. Gosh, man, that Holy Ghost is moving. I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is moving. That's, that's all right, uh, Robert Nicole. So division uh, is is kind of like made up of of two words. The prefix d d i means two, and then obviously we all know what vision means. So when you have division or division. You're trying to look at two things at the same time. You're focused two separate ways, trying to move towards both of them simultaneously. Uh, James says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So if you're trying to look at religion and a bunch of rules, but then also trying to have a genuine relationship with Jesus Mm -hmm. and genuinely trying to bring people to the knowledge of Christ, none of that's going to work. You're either going to end up starting breaking your rules that you've put on yourself, or you're not going to be able to bring people to Christ and have that genuine relationship with them yourself. Can I take a little bit of liberty and maybe get just slightly offensive in the Holy Ghost? (laughs) Maybe. Okay. Um, We can't be looking out for ourselves and the kingdom. If we're on the throne, then Jesus isn't. If Jesus is on the throne, we can't be then the kingdom of God is only going to look like us. Mm-hmm. Any Everybody in our church is going to think like us. They're going to look mm-hmm. like us. They're going to be in our social tax bracket. This is, this is a huge thing in my spirit, and it really, it really bothers me when people are like, I don't know how to go witness to that person because they don't look like me or they don't act like me. They don't talk like me. I'm like, dude, they gr- they're going to be in the kingdom if you just go talk to them, you know? But if you're if you're too focused on the fact that they don't they're not enough like you to be in the kingdom, and I'm preaching to myself here, then you need to step down off the throne. Because Jesus, yes, he was a Middle Eastern man two thousand years ago, but right now, he is the father of us all. We have we all have one father. We are all brother, brothers and sisters. I don't know where else to go from there, but I'm still passionate. So <laughs> <laughs> don't be double-minded, have singular vision. I was going to kind of have like a small testimony where not fully, but what we were talking about though, I've been having these types of situations happening in my life recently where it's like, 
trust me, I, I used to be a very anxious person. Um, like very anxious. Thankfully, God has worked on me and is continuing to work on me. I'm not saying I'm never having my moments of fear or anxiety, but during those moments, I just quote how much God loves me in those moments because that's the only way fear is going to leave. But I've had moments where it's like, oh, not even just the beginning of this year or last year, but the last few years where I say things people don't want to hear. Like, trust me, I, I've been told like, hey, you shouldn't have said that. That was too early for you to say that. And I'm like, but I'm sorry, God's not out here wanting to play patty cake with everyone. He wants to know if you're in or you're out. He wants to know, are you for me or are you against me? Figure it out and go which whatever way you want to go like and I really feel like that's what's happening this year but it's been happening incrementally since 2019 slowly and slowly and slowly and like just booming soon and I even recently I was like messaging someone which you were talking about earlier like uh ABL about how you might have something you're gonna go through it and then you have to go tell somebody about that I had that recently I was healed of ADHD lo- that last year. Randomly, I scroll, I stumbled across someone who is considered a social media apostolic influencer to a point who was talking about how they have ADHD in it. And God was like, tell them about your testimony. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm going to talk to this person I've never talked to before and send this random message because I have no idea why, but I'm going to do it because I need to, because it's obviously something important. I did that. She thanked me. She was like, thank you for telling me the thing you told me. And I have to pray about that now. Like, thanks. And I'm like, well, I'll keep you in my prayers too. Like there's, we just need to do it. Like, I know how scary it is. Like my word for this year is advance. That is not easy to do when you're scared. You can't go forward when you're scared because all you're doing is looking in your rear view mirror the whole time. You can't go forward looking in a rear view mirror because then you're going to crash into something. You're going to go the wrong, whatever it is that's in front of you, you're not focused on it. Like, um, I don't know. I don't know where I'm trying to go, but yeah, there's just, there's a lot with that, that it's just, fear is just not worth wasting your time because I know for me, I'd rather be in the will of God than be like terrified to do whatever it is he asked me And then somehow, and not stop whoever it is, because I'm going to offend them so they can continue to do what they're doing. Because whatever somebody wants to do, if they want to do it, they're just going to do it. If they truly want something, they're just going to do it. But if they are going to listen to what God has for them, they'll stop. So for me, I may offend some people. I've had some people really like they left the church because I was honest with them because God was like, I'm not playing games. And I told you what I told you. So I reiterated what God told them. And sadly they left. I'm praying they come back. Maybe they're just in a wilderness season trying to figure out where they need to be. Still going to pray for them until God tells me to stop, which I don't think he will for a while. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know where else I'm going with that, but yeah, that's kind of my testimony (laughs) of how God's been dealing with this slowly with me. No, no, that that's good. There's um uh I like what you said about the quoting how much God loves you when fear comes because fear is is going to come. But again, it's that holding on to the strength of the word and you know, reminding yourself of the word in that moment, the love that casts out all fear. Like that is, I, mean, I don't think you get too much better than that outside of actually just living in it. I, I, yeah, it's, it's in fall in the fall of 2022, when we we're having that prayer meeting, I seen that out and I thought it was just going, Oh, this thing's happening. And, and then the confirmations of different words, it's like, you know, this is actually a process. And so, as you mentioned, the, the processing and, you know, things that God has been dealing with you about it, et cetera. It's like, as literally like, I'm, I'm starting to see this direction, this, this, okay. So these are the steps. This is what we're, what God's doing. And this is how we're going to get there. And when we get to that place, that's a place of free flowing, um, uh, supernatural gifting because the fear isn't there. The fear isn't hindering. And so what's going to happen is we're going to have to, um, you know, honestly, the Bible says, if you love, if you love my law, nothing shall offend you. Right. Um, or great peace have them that 
love my law and nothing shall offend them. All right, so there's a there's an internal work and an external work that needs to be done. Okay, we have to get to the place to where we're not we love his law so much, love, right? Love that that love causes us to not get offended. So we can get and and dead flesh. <laughs> All right, so submitting our flesh and you know, dead flesh and submitting our opinions cuz submission um like I was reading in brother Hernandez's book, submission isn't isn't um is you letting go of your opinion for obedience and listening to that that leading voice in your life. And so if we're supposed to be submitted, which, you know, one towards another, the Bible literally says that to our spiritual authority where we give away, that, that can hurt sometimes. That's, that can hurt our pride. That can hurt our flesh. And so there's going to be a when necessity. We're going to need to have dead flesh. We're going to need to have our flesh crucified and our love for the word of God, for the truth to be so much to where we can allow our brothers and sisters to minister the way they're supposed to minister. And if they say something that gets us, it got us. Okay. I need to correct that. Yeah. I need to change that, but I'm not going to get offended to try to suffocate them or try to hurt them or to, to harm them. Right. Okay. So we love his law. Nothing was going to offend us. And, it, and we're, crucifying ourselves daily all right and we pray we fast but someone's gonna have to do something about our little feetsies down there and help us get on the tree right on the cross and so there's a crucifixion process so if we allow that and romance it fall in love with that process of okay i'm purging myself of myself to allow another spirit mike <clears throat> the holy ghost to lead and direct and guide then we submit to that we give our brother and sister room to 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 speak and to preach the word unfettered. <clears throat> and they feel the boldness to do it because they're not going to hurt their brothers and sisters in Christ. And then we start stepping closer and closer because I know a lot of us, we are, we're sincerely, um, we, we, you know, we don't want to hurt people. We don't want to like, you know, uh, offend our brothers and sisters in Christ, which is, it, it's, it's not right. Okay. Honestly, it's not right, but it's, um, it's, um, we sincerely feel that way with goodwill. Okay. But it's still not right, but, um, uh, it's full of goodwill. Okay. Well, if we do our part in allowing the word of God to come forth straight and, and by, no matter who it's coming from, and then we preach it straight. Okay. Allowing the Holy ghost to flow through us. We're conquering our fears. We're doing that. Then we have a church that can operate in unity. Because we're allowing our brothers and sisters to minister the way, the way they're supposed to, and then we're ministering the way we're supposed to, so that so you see what I'm saying? There's no there's no um uh, the fear, man. The, the 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 fear isn't there from both sides. Well, if he says this, then that's going to hurt me, and I fear to be hurt and fear to be exposed. Or I'm going to say this because it needs to be said, and I'm not going to fear the faces of the people. You know, it's like both of that. And so <clears throat> this is um dude. This is a discussion. This is deep. All right. And then we are going to have to wrap up because I'm pretty sure we can keep going back and forth for, for quite some time. All right, Abigail. Okay. So oh, this call has been amazing. And I'm really, I appreciate every single person that has shared. I know not everyone's on here right now, but it's been beautiful. Um, so thank you to everyone who's still here. Um, but I felt like we kept coming back to this one point and I had, I had a vision like a week ago. And I was like, oh, God, I feel like I need to share that. But I was kind of scared. And we keep talking about how like God gives us stuff when you just speak past the fear, you know, like, so I'm like, oh, man, I'm gonna have to do this. So because I kept it felt I felt like it kept coming up. So excuse my nervousness, but I'm just gonna say it. So um, anyway, the way the way it went was, it was on our prayer call, um, I think it was last week, Tuesday. And we were praying and I was like, God, I just want to, I just want to follow after your spirit right now. Like, just help me to pray what you want me to pray. And I felt like he just started giving me this vision and I described it somewhat on the call. Um, but I didn't give all of the details cause I was nervous at that point as well. <laughs> um, but anyways, um, I saw it was this young man sitting against the wall in his bedroom. I, I remember describing some of that, but, um, you know, I was, I'll just give the details, even though I don't want to repeat myself too much, just for context. Um, so it opens up and I see this young man sitting in a dark room and it's full of this 
this fog. It's like a haze in his room that's dark. And he's sitting against the wall next to his door. And I see him there at first, and I just see this, like, absolute, dis like, despair, hopelessness, discouragement, kind of like depression. And um, I was like, oh, man. And it was like he was hanging his head in shame. So it's like he was sitting there with his knees pulled up and his, his head like this, you know, just sitting there. And then I stretched, God just started, you know, telling me what he wanted to do. And I see this angel walk up and I see him, um, begin to, he like re reached out his hand to offer help and strength. And then the young man ended up like, he like looked up and he, he got up and it was like the Lord was putting his armor on him. And the angel like gave him this sword. And when the young man took the sword, he kind of like wiggled it around and he like, looked like whoa because as he did that it was like the fog dissipated and it was just this little snippet like just as he did that it was just like whoosh, 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 and he was like whoa this is powerful and it wasn't like he just went crazy with it right away but he just recognized that like hey hey wait this is doing something and then I just saw like how God wanted to bring light and 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 his presence into that room and then it was like it switched back and it was like I saw what the what had he had been in it was like he was back on the floor sitting down and I'm seeing condemnation speaking to him and it's like this very harsh like it was a black figure pointing at him just very harsh words coming out of you know this voice I believe it was condemnation speaking to him just like you can't get up you got to stay there you have to stay in your shame look at what you've done look at all these fail failures in your life you'll never amount to anything those kinds of that that feeling and he's just sitting there and it was like, all of a sudden I could see this, this guy's face. And it was like the, I could see the hand of the Lord coming to his ear and, and like the Lord was saying, listen to what I say about you. Listen to who I say you are. Rise up in who I call you. You are an overcomer. You know, listen, like remember my love and my mercy over that shame that you once had. Like let my blood be powerful over that, be more powerful than your shame. And, and stand in that as an overcomer. And so um, I just felt to share that because I felt like there were a couple different things that were coming up and I was like, okay, this is important. I think I should share it. So blah, there you go. I hope that blessed somebody. God bless you guys. Yeah, no, that's, um, thank you for sharing that. And uh, in situations like that, I know um, that you have to, you have to speak it and because it'll land. And you never know that that the word of God is timeless. And so that vision that um, hits someone's uh, mind as you're commit, conveying it or communicating it, that can land in uh, their field. And in a time of storm or a time of um, they feel condemnation, they can reach back to that. And the word was for them, but the timing was off. So you never know. It could be time or it could be on. It could be 100% on like right now. So, um, but I'm just saying like, um, I know what it's like to be like, uh, and you're waiting for like, whatever, five, six minutes to go do what God told you to do. You're like, okay, God, okay, God, okay, God, okay, okay I'm going to do it now. But, um, uh, you, you know, sharing that and, and, um, getting that out. That's, a dem that's the ministry that we're supposed to be operating in. <clears throat> as brothers and sisters of Christ. So thank you for that. Just want to encourage you there. All right. Does anyone have anything else to share? Dude, this is going to be something that you, then we'll go back and just watch over and over again. Um, Cause there's so much in it. And if we're working through a season, if God gives you a word for, or let's say in a season and maybe for a season, meaning that that word may stretch over time. And so um, some of us who are maybe needing to be reminded of, of taking action like Jehu, or needing to um, uh, operate in the spirit and 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 live how we're supposed to live against the flesh or against the whatever it may be like we may need to listen to this again all right so <clears throat> excuse me my voice is it's going seems like but um but uh but yeah this has been tremendous and uh, it's is very interesting the confirmations about um you know that I felt last night and I felt this morning and then um, Alyssa felt it. And then, you know, um, uh, Kayla comes on and is like, you know what? Yeah, another confirmation. Okay. Okay. And then this happened. So that's awesome. It's funny because games and stuff like that was cool, but like, like in general, but I think that we need to, we need to get a little bit more serious about things of God. Not that 
that there's no place for that because there is a place for it, I believe. But it's like, I think we're all kind of feeling like this. There's more. There's like this tug, this pull for deeper and greater and um, purer in heart. So, yeah, let's. Um, and you guys shared this because I was actually, uh, I know Cameron's writing a book. So when she had, when we started down this vein, I was like, oh man, you know, Cameron should watch this. So I uh, shared this with a friend super awesome covers spirit of jezebel and how to deal with it is super powerful um let's uh everyone is there anything else anyone wanted to mention actually i do want to say no. something so you know how okay. earlier that i shared about the uh progression overcoming the spirit of fear that we have the love and that gives us the power and the sound mind and then something um, Robert said kind of triggered the parallelism where he talked about how the division in the church, it's division. You're looking at two things and you're focused on two things and a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So it's kind of a two-way street that when we're focused, when we're unified, when we are doing things and walking in love the way that God wants us to, our mental state is okay. But when we get distracted, when we get ununified, when we allow ourselves to become divided or overcome by fear, we become unstable mentally and emotionally and physically. And that takes a toll where when we are unstable mentally then it becomes more easy for us to become susceptible to false doctrine and it's this downward spiral where when we allow fear to control our life there's so much other things that we allow ourselves to become opened up to it's almost like fear is a channel to where we allow the negativity and whatever other messages that the enemy wants to feed us, that he just sticks it on the fear train and we go, choo, 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 thank you, I'll eat that. Whereas when we are operating in love, we close the door to where he no longer has that type of access to us. And we walk in that power. We walk in the authority. And we walk in love through Jesus Christ to do what he has called us to do. That's good. That's good. Abigail? I, I took my hand down because I was like, oh, dear, I might keep this call long. Um, I'll try to keep no, it go, brief. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So I guess just adding on to that number one. Okay. Alyssa, that was so good. Mm -hmm. I Okay. Something else I have to take notes on later. Just goals. Okay. Go, keep it up. I love it. Um, I guess hopefully this isn't too much. So when I was a child, um, I was in an intercession and it was, I was getting really new at it. I was probably like 10, 10 and a half. And, um, anyway, during that time I ended up, the spirit of fear came against me. And so I ended up, it was just telling me all these lies and all these things about a person in our church saying that they were in hell. I was literally seeing this person in hell as a kid. I'm like, devil doesn't play. So, um, anyway, going through all of that and then, um, I could not get myself off the floor. I was feeling sick, um, seeing all these things, absolutely horrified. Um, just wishing someone would come and pick me up and help me out. And so my mom came and pulled me out and, um, just speaking to the power of God's word. So we get home and I'm sitting in my room, I'm supposed to go to bed and I'm like, I, I can't have the lights off. Like I was never usually afraid of the dark, but at that point I was like, I, I just can't have the lights off. Like, this is not okay. And so I ended up going to my parents' room and I'm like, can you guys pray for me? I, I'm, I, I'm so afraid right now. I don't know what's going on. And, um, cause that fear was like really hitting hard. So they prayed over me and they gave me that scripture that says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And they said, every time fear comes against me to quote that scripture, and so um, it's just, again, you know, when you have the word of God, it can set you free. I was able to go to bed peacefully. I was able to be all right. I did, it did take a couple of years to kind of like 
get back into that deep prayer. Like sometimes that fear tried to stop me again, like whatever. But it's like, if we'll just continue to use the word of God, when those things come up, he'll help us to walk as overcomers. And, you know, no matter how hard the enemy fights you, when you are walking in the spirit, it might get hard. But God's word is strong enough to help you keep going and to overcome and to slay those giants. So you just keep going after it and and you're going to win. Like comparing myself to my my childhood, like there's a big difference in the fear factor. And God, I'm not perfect, but God's helping me to walk in faith and boldness. And I'm like, glory to Jesus. He knew I needed his help. <laughs> so um, that's just my testimony. Keep holding on to the word of God, guys. It, it works. Yeah, it, it sure does. It, it it sure does. And that's awesome. It's it's interesting to see how God will allow things to happen. And then in the process of time, um, learn, help us get the victory. And, and so that it's not just like, it's not head knowledge. Um, and it's not even like heart knowledge when it comes to like revelation, but it's like, it, I know it's like something I experienced. It's that highest level of like knowing something. Like, no, I've experienced that. And I know that, um, that uh, the word of God works over fear and putting fear in its proper uh, perspective. Um, and uh, Robert, Nicole? Just a quick thing based off of what Abigail said. Uh, that's kind of what I was getting at when I said like quoting the love of God is kind of like quoting scripture, but also like in kind of a similar sense of what Abigail was saying. Um, I noticed once I started like leaning into intercession more often, I would have moments where I have to drive Robert to work early in the morning at like 5 30 in the morning so I come home by myself to enter an apartment all by myself so in the morning when it's dark we live in a really really safe area to be honest like we don't have bad stuff over here I mean the worst thing you could deal with is possibly meeting a drug dealer but like that's not even that bad compared to some places honestly like I, I've dealt with a lot in my life so I'm not really <laughs> I don't know why the spirit of fear comes over me where it's like hey you're a female you're alone be scared I'm like no like what's the point of this like okay like yeah I'm a female and like cool like I have God on my side like why does it matter so not just quoting scripture but I will personally out loud say okay God Jesus I love you I, Jesus I love you because when one when you say the name it has to leave you alone second when you bring up love fear has to flee so I just I say that often when when I'm going through that type of thing and I I just wanted to go off of that so it's just i i know it usually attacks females than it more than it does males with the whole fear thing because of how now i mean nowadays specifically we're told that hey we females can do whatever we want but we also need to protect ourselves because men are terrible people you know that's how it's taught in the world where it's like oh men are these that's why we want to emasculate men so they're less threatening it's like no 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 that's not how it works like, that's not how that fixes everything. So, and I'm going to let uh, Alyssa talk. Okay. I just want to share one more thing about like overcoming fear and fear being in your life that when you quote a scripture and you make the choice to walk in love and not let fear control your life, it's kind of like muscle memory that the more you walk in that authority and stuff, it becomes easier and you overcome it a lot quicker and it has less dominion to come into your life the more you exercise that. So just because it may feel hard or even be hard at the beginning, still choose to walk in love, still choose to exercise authority over that. And the more you walk in it, the easier it will get. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, there's there's um a lot here. And I thank you guys, everyone who contributed. I know not everyone who did contribute is on right now, but I thank you guys for, um, for pouring into the ministry pot. It's like, but I see it as, um, Holy Ghost set the stage and then everyone started ministering to each other. You know, Hey, this is what, this makes sense. And this is revelation here. And then there's this, and then there's that. And so, um, thank you guys for, for, for doing that. Appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, Holy Ghost for this opportunity god to uh to plug into your spirit we thank you for everything that you have done today god we give you the the credit the glory and the honor and we worship you and we praise you jesus 
We thank you for ministering to our spirits. We thank you, God, for imparting more of yourself into us through your word, God. And I pray, Jesus, that you would help us to embody your word, embody your truth, God, uh, embody your love, God, embody who you are, Lord, in us. Forgive us, we ask, God, uh, of the areas in our lives where we've suffered this spirit of Jezebel, this, these carnal desires, these carnal appetites, division, lack of unity, um, fear, where we've allowed it to, to stay. I pray that you would forgive us for those things. We repent of those things, God, and cover ourselves in the power of repentance, dear God. And we ask that you would forgive us for these things, that you would wash these sins from our charge, God, and that you would help us to, to walk in and live in your strength, dear God, that comes uh, uh, with your word. Jesus, that there would be revelation, that um, this revelation that we spoke of, God, that the revelation would be inside of our heart, our spirits, God, our beings, so that we may walk before you uprightly, and walk before you rightly, Jesus. We pray that you would help us to overcome the areas of our flesh that will hold us back and that would hold us down, God, that would give ear ear uh, to fear, God, that would, would uh, allow fear to live inside of us or allow a manipulative behavior or the spirit of Jezebel or or, or, or things of that nature to, to live inside of us, God. We pray that you would anoint us like you did uh, the prophets of old and that you would give us that strength of your word as as uh, Jehu's name uh, in the original meaning, Jehovah is he, that, that, that the word of God would be so inside of us that we empty ourselves of ourselves, God, and the word of God and, and the spirit of God would be so inside of us that that boldness that was in the book of Acts that they experienced would, would permeate us, God, and be inside of us lord and we completely submit to you lord and the timing god the working that you're doing in the soil of our hearts the contaminants that you're pulling out the things that you're doing away with god and we pray that the processing that you have us in right now god would uh have us complete and perfect work god the, the to, to to be whole to be 100 percent of everything that you desire for our hearts our souls our minds our spirits god our our, our ourselves our entire beings lord we thank you for this opportunity to be around like-minded young people, God, people who uh, desire you, the future of the church, God, those who want you and those who want to live victoriously for you, even if it means letting go of ourselves, God, we thank you for that. I thank you for that, God, and I pray a special blessing over us over the next uh, few hours, God, the next uh, uh, 72 hours this weekend, God, that you would cover us, that you would keep us safe, that you keep us protected physically, God. Set your angels about us to protect us spiritually as well. Let the word of God that was discussed tonight be inside of our spirits, inside of our souls, oh God, not just temporarily, temporarily, God, but to be inside of us, Lord, and, 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 uh, and, uh, be to permeate inside of us, God. And we thank you for that. We worship you for it. We receive the blessing of the, of the word of God and we receive, receive the blessing of the Lord. We worship you, God, and we praise you in Jesus' matchless, holy, powerful name. Lord, help us to choose faith and live in faith, God, in, in the stead of fear. And we worship you and we praise you, God. We thank you again for your processes and your timing. God, help us to walk in your timing, not to try to push things uh, beyond your timing, God, but to walk in your timing and be comfortable and okay with the timing of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, God. Amen. Love you guys. God bless.